drive. The pressure. Roland Jones will get the sack at the 27. Out the way. Denver's defense was third in the AFC, and they took the ball away 35 times. The ability to turn defense into offense has always been a Bronco strength. Touchdown! But of four defensive touchdowns in 1986, none was more important than the one that sealed a week nine victory over the rival Los Angeles Raiders. Come on, defense, let's get him, baby. One more down. Denver's D was built around 19 interchangeable players, but the offense was built around just one. Quarterback John Elway, number seven. Three wide receivers, a couple of running backs, and Elway, who could be a little bit of everything. And hand the ball to Sewell, and Sewell wants to throw the pass to John Elway. He does it to the 15 No other quarterback can beat you in so many different ways. And he is the master of the inconceivable pass thrown to the unreachable spot. Elway's legendary arm strength allows him to throw the ball between the tiniest gaps in a defense. He has the strongest arm I've ever seen in my life. I have never seen a guy with that kind of arm in my life. The ball moves so fast, I turned my head and it was there. With John Elway, each play has two acts. There's the one he calls in the huddle, and the one that he runs when he's out of it. Quite often, the second is not the same as the first, but more often than not, it succeeds. Elway has won more games over the last three seasons than any other quarterback. But in the second half of the season, the rest of the hub of that defense. A 12th round draft pick a couple of years ago, and he's turned into a fine Pro Bowl football player. It's an exciting football team, a team that's turned on Denver over the entire existence of its uh, franchise, and they have fans from the blue-collar workers to the very famous and celebrated Leon Uris. Recently wrote a guest column in the Denver Post in which he said, being a Denver Broncos fan is like being married to my lovely wife, Jill. It's a whole lot of happiness. It's sometimes agony, but baby, it is never gone. It sounds like a good marriage, and we know it's an exciting football team. We think we're going to enjoy our game. Now, not too much happiness for the Pittsburgh Steelers following that opening loss. I don't have to tell you what the radio call-in shows sound like in this town at this time. Part of the problem, of course, is that there is such a high standard. The Steelers are the only team in NFL history to win four Super Bowls. Last year, with a losing mark, their first in 71, they missed the playoffs for only the third time in the last 14 years. They had a very bad preseason winning only one game and then they were embarrassed last week by Seattle final score 30 to nothing. They are probably not that bad but the people around here want to know if they're any good at all and if they can contend in the relatively weak but improving AFC Central Division. I think the key to any Steelers success this season will be the quarterback Mark Malone. He's been here long enough and it's time to prove himself. He was the number one draft choice out of Arizona State in 1980. He had to wait in the wings for years for Terry Bradshaw to retire. And now he's finally been given a shot in the last couple of seasons, but has yet to develop the consistency necessary. The Steelers are hopeful he can begin that guidance tonight. And the Steelers to receive the opening kick as Rich Carlos kicks off for the Broncos, who come off that exciting 38-36 victory. And the breeze here at Three Rivers Stadium blows the ball off the tee. And that's the response from the crowd. So, to a very limited extent, an auspicious beginning for the Steelers tonight. And now Carlos comes forward again, and we're underway in Pittsburgh. Good deep kick, and no run back as Donnie Elder takes care of it in the end zone. And here comes Mark Malone now to lead the Steelers. Malone completing just 50% of his passes last season, and he missed about 40% of the year with a dislocated toe. Last week, a terrible week at Seattle. He was 9 out of 27, worse.
first start of his career and the Steelers last week generated only 146 yards total offense. So here we go with Pollard and Abercrombie the running backs and it's Abercrombie on first down getting nowhere. It'll be second down and 10. Louis Wright comes up to make the tackle. So with Malone the quarterback the Denver defense with Rulon Jones in there tonight despite rib problems. The good linebackers Mecklenburg to whom Frank alluded early on and Wright the mainstay of that secondary. Offense penalties decline second down. Ray Penny illegal motion on the first play and it was declined since it was no gain. Denver takes the play and the Steelers have it second down 10. Pollard and Abercrombie and both have been injured in preseason. Pollard. Only two. Pollard coming off arthroscopic knee surgery as Mecklenburg makes the tackle and Abercrombie had a septic meningitis earlier this year and a hip pointer. Al, I think we should point out very early on, so much was made of the surgery, the ruptured disc of Joe Montana, the San Francisco 49er quarterback. Uh, we have just been in touch with officials on the West Coast. The damage to the disc was not as extensive as they thought it might be. Uh, they, as a matter of fact, will place him on injury reserve, and it could be that he might even be back later in the season. We'll update that if we hear any more from the West Coast. Third down and eight, Stallworth in motion. He and Lick were both to the right side, and Malone gets sacked back at the 10 yard. 73, the second year man out of Houston, and it doesn't take long for the booing to begin. Home opener, first series, and the fans let him have it. Watch number 73, and this is what Denver likes to do. Dan Reeves will bring in Simon Fletcher. Here he is, getting the sack, and Greg Craigan on the pass rush situation, and it pays off here. And actually, Mark Malone last week, Al had a lot of time to throw the football. He just didn't connect with those nine of 27. High snap, Newsom comes down with it and gets the kick away, and it's a good kick. into Pittsburgh territory gets back to the 41 but a flag was thrown back near the line of scrimmage and the referee tonight is Bob McElwee as usual we'll have the man downfield and I would suspect that Denver will want the football they are in Pittsburgh territory at the 43 yard line so McElwee has given us the call they discussed the options with Tom Jackson and he says let the offense take field. over. Number 36 on the kicking team. Penalty is declined. First down. First so the Broncos take over at the 42-yard line. The penalty was against David Hughes. The running back just picked up playing on the special teams. And meanwhile, here come the Broncos at the Steeler 43-yard line. and they were not on the same page. Samson was going in. Steve Watson was going deep and Elway threw a sideline pattern. There are John's figures for last season when he threw more than 600 passes. When you take a Vance Johnson out of the offense as he was taken out with that knee injury in the opening game against the Raiders, you lose a lot of things. One of them is the speed. Mark Jackson, a rookie from Purdue, has some speed, but they'll have to think differently without Vance Johnson in the lineup than they did with him in the lineup. Second and ten, and the Broncos out of the shotgun. Elway, short roll, comes back the other way, looking for Watson, who reaches but can't make the catch. He'd gotten out in front. David Lettle, meanwhile, put the pressure on Elway and decked him as John got rid of it, and Watson, the intended receiver, covered on the play by Harvey Clayton. John Elway bought the time back there, as he will all night. He'll move around there. He got the time, even under the pressure, to get the pass off. Watson, never known for his speed, just couldn't get there. And also shaken up on that play and still limping but staying in the ballgame is Gerald Wilhite. And Elway was also smashed. So third down, 10. Elway out of the shotgun. The crowd exhorts the defense. 
almost picked off by Eric Williams. Intended for Steve Sewell. Elway had to get rid of the football. You see Hinkle, bottom of your screen coming. You see 41 coming on the safety blitz as Sheffield, the rookie. Elway had to throw the football. He tried to hurry it into the tight end, and it was almost picked off. There's Sewell working along the line. It got into the pattern. He actually was open, and Eric Williams, with the pressure, almost picked that off. So the Broncos can't pick up a first down, and back to receive is Rick Woods with Jack Wheel standing in his own 43-yard line. And angling it for the near side. And it gets there. And they'll line it up, and the Steelers will take over at the 13-yard line. And the crowd doesn't like the spot. They thought it went out closer to the 20. So the Steelers take over again. We're just underway at Three Rivers, Denver and Pittsburgh, and we're scoreless. Introducing McDonald's NFL Kickoff Payoff. Oh boy, a new game at McDonald's. I'm so excited. How do you play? Collect trading cards of all your favorite NFL stars. I got my card. Yes, yes, no. No. Yes, yes. Each card the winner. Win a McDonald's sandwich, fry, or Coca Cola. New winners every week. But you got only one week to turn in your winning card. So hustle. NFL Kickoff Payoff. Follow me. I know a shortcut. The legendary Mercedes-Benz SL Coupe Roadster. To every reason you ever had for wanting to drive it, you can now add one more. A mighty 5.6-liter light alloy V8 engine. 227 horsepower. Infinite driving excitement. The Mercedes-Benz 560 SL. For three years, Bryant has been paying people back for their highest month's gas bill. This year, we're, we're doubling, doubling the, the deal. deal. Two months of free gas when you buy our Plus 90 gas furnace. We can do this for two reasons. Gas is economical, and the Plus 90 is so efficient, it uses less gas. So cash in on our double deal. Call 800-HOT-SALE for your Bryant dealer. And if you get a busy signal, call again. Gas. America's best energy value. score early on first quarter as the Pittsburgh Steelers were forced to punt. The Broncos took over in Steeler territory. They couldn't move. Chuck Knoll in his 18th season. The only coach with four Super Bowl rings. But as to be expected in modern society, I suppose, somewhat under fire, at least by the fans here, who've been disappointed in the way the Steelers have played through the preseason and certainly last week at Seattle. Below toward the near side and completing it at the 29-yard line to Lewis Lips, who was shut out last week, and Louis Wright covers him on the play. And they hard, to believe, him and hard to believe he was shut out because he was one of the finest receivers to come up in many years, and here he works against Louis Wright and makes Louis back up and think deep and then plants that foot, breaks it to the outside. Louis Wright was right there. Good defensive coverage, as a matter of fact, against the speed to Wright because if he gets, gets lips because if you do not cover him that way, he's going to beat you deep. He is the big man now. John Stallworth mostly works underneath, and he is adapted also to that role. Meanwhile, they are going to review when you see that walkie-talkie. That's the cue that uh, Al Conway, who is the umpire, is talking to Paul Trapinski upstairs. And again, this does come under the auspices of the replay official. It's his call to make. Two things to remember here. Did he come down with both feet in bounds? And was he hit that forced him out of bounds? And he was unable to come down with both feet in bounds. I thought both feet were in. We'll see it again from this angle. I thought he. By the replay official, the play stands. First down. It's the right call. You can see it. One foot down, and the other, he gets his toe down. Nobody is better, by the way, at doing that than Louis Lips. He does it well in the end zone. They like to, when they get down around the 20-yard line, they like to use him in the end zone. He has done that over and over in his brief career. On first and 10 from the 29, it's Pollard out to the 33. Tom Jackson.
Dixon makes the stop. They are not what you would call scintillating running backs here in Pittsburgh, Frank, but they do get the job done. Pollard and Abercrombie, the question is health. Well, last year they came over 1,800 yards between them, but again, it is health. Abercrombie, of course, with a hip pointer coming into tonight, and you already mentioned the fact that he had had meningitis. Pollard recovering from July 15th knee surgery, and what Denver wants to do is to stop the running game if they can, and nevertheless, Pittsburgh is being able to move the ball, and if they can stop the running game, they can take away the play-action pass. That's what they like to do. Second and six, and it's dropped by Lips. And you Lips. better cover that man. Covered by Wright, but it was right there. So an uncharacteristic drop for a man, as we said, held without a reception for only the second time in his three-year pro career last week at Seattle. Again, Louis Wright covering him right there. Bump and run. Now he has to let go at five yards. That's the last area in which he can hit him. A ball that he should have caught uh, with his kinds of hands. But again, Louis Wright with good coverage on one of the best receivers in this game. So third down and six, and Rich Ehrenberg comes in. That's he in the slot to the right, and he's playing with a slightly separated shoulder. Stallworth comes in motion. He and Lips are both to the right side. Malone looking over the middle and underthrows it at the 50-yard line. Intended for Lips, so he goes Louis' way three times on this drive, but the Steelers are forced to punt again. Well, Lips was getting single coverage on all three attempts to him, so Malone was going to the right man. He just did not get the ball there on that occasion, and the time before, it was a pass the Lips should have caught. Will Hyde back to receive. Newsom, who had a bad year last year, but won the job back and had a good week outside of one block in Seattle, gets off a poor kick, but it takes a good stealer bounce. And I believe it was touched well, they've marked a it. moment ago, but or have they? Yes, they have. At the 22-yard line, he dropped the beanbag, so even though the Steelers down it at the 13, Donnie Elder winds up costing them nine yards as he makes contact at the 22-yard line. And back comes Elway and the Broncos. Eight long years of development have created the Mercedes-Benz 300E. It moves from 0 to 55 in a stunning 7.5 seconds. It moves performance sedan engineering into a new dimension. And it returns to 0 with computerized ABS anti-lock brakes. The 300E sedan. contains no additives or preservatives. Purity you can see, quality you can taste. The Cincinnati Bengals, guided by the hot hand of Boomer Esiason. The Cleveland Browns, Bernie Kozar hopes he can match the firepower. An ABC Thursday night NFL special. Mr. Everything, Dallas Cowboy back and a longtime coach of the Tom Landry there knows that the Pittsburgh Steelers, they are not flamboyant, but they can beat you. He was 13-3 and in 84 with the Denver Bronco team, and the Pittsburgh Steelers came and beat them in Denver to knock them out of the playoffs. He has a lot of respect for them. From the 22-yard line, they said Winder in motion and give it to Lang, and Lang out past the 30 to the 31-yard line. We know about Elway, of course, and we know about the Denver receivers, even minus Vance Johnson, as Lang goes hobbling off the field. The big question about the Denver offense, of course, is the running game. Can they get that in gear? Winder had a 1,000-yard year a couple of years back, but was besieged by injuries last year. And now Lang goes hobbling off here, and Gerald Wilhite is in there in place from number 47, with Winder the tailback in this formation. Second and one. Winder goes in motion again, and the Steelers jump, and this should be a free play unless 
first. It was whistled dead as Will High takes it out to the 36. In any event, it should be a first down for Denver. That nine-yard run, by the way, by Gene Lang. Tight end, number 88. He was drawn off. Clarence K drew him off. K drawing off the Steelers, so they'll back the Broncos up at that nine-yard pickup by Lang a moment ago was longer than any run they had in their rated game. It'll give you an idea how tough that game was. You know, one of the odd things about that game, Frank, is that when you look at the score 38-36, you figure that the Broncos must have picked up 450, 500 yards total offense. Actually, only 290. Got some breaks, ran a fumble in for a touchdown. And they got a very opportune penalty against the Raiders. Second down and six. And with Sewell going in motion, on a reverse, Winder hands it to Sewell, coming back this way. Sewell it to the 35-yard line where he's stopped by Harvey Clayton. So Sewell, the man who threw the option touchdown pass back to Elway last week, he can do a lot of things out there. Good all-around athlete out of Oklahoma, number one draft pick a year ago. He can throw the ball, he can catch the ball, he can run with the football, and Danny Reeves believes in the gadget plays. He has several of them. You're going to see them in almost every game. What it does, it makes you think. It slows your defense down in their pursuit. They can't look at a play developing and think it's going to be a sweep because something like that's going to happen you're going to come back against the grain so it just makes the defense hesitate for just a moment and sometimes you can get a big play out of it he sends Watson in motion sends Watson deep and it throws over the middle underneath to Gerald Wilhite who takes it to the 43 yard line Wilhite has always been a good receiver David Little number 50 the linebacker out of Florida the man filling the spot once occupied by Jack Lambert makes the tackle Elway was thinking deep. He had Clint Sampson on a fly pattern. Watched it develop. He had the time, and when he ran out of time and the coverage was on Sampson, he just dumped it off underneath the Willite. Broncos and the Steelers with no score. Nine minutes and 25 seconds to play in the first quarter. Broncos 1-0. Steelers come in 0-1. As the two teams wrap up week two, Willite in motion. Sammy Winder through the middle. Pass the 45 and fumbles the ball at the 47 yard line. And the Steelers have it. So a big break as Eric Williams comes up from the safety spot. There he is, the man who nearly had the interception before, winds up with a fumble recovery. Look at it again. It's trying to get through the line of scrimmage and all that traffic. Winder. Tries to break it loose. Hinkle was there and batted it out of his hands, and Eric Williams was all over it. We'll see it better from the reverse angle, I'm sure. Here's a handoff. Hinkle coming from his linebacking position on the right side. Gets a hand in there. Out it comes, and Eric Williams is there. So the Steelers taking a page out of the play of the Denver Broncos defense. They get the turnover, and they get it in Bronco territory. First and ten, Pittsburgh at the Denver 47-yard line. And they have used him there, and he goes in motion, and he blocks for Abercrombie, who takes it to the 45-yard line. Another look at Williams, who's been in on two big plays already tonight, the missed intercept, and then the fumble recovery. He had an interception last week against Seattle in a game in which the Steelers, as you see, were across the 50-yard line only twice. Never so much as attempted a field goal. And it was a long time between crossings. Too. I think their first drive took them over the, the deepest penetration. Second and eight, they give it to Hughes, who gets to the 40-yard line. David Hughes, the former Seahawk, waved by them. And with Abercrombie and Pollard hurting and Aaron Berg with that separated shoulder, they had to go to the waiver wire for Hughes out of Seattle. And then they picked up another running back this week, Chuck Sanders, who'd been released by San Diego. And this moves uncharacteristic of Chuck Noll. It is. He had no other choice. We've already talked about Abercrombie, the problems he has had. The subject meningitis, Pollard with a problem knee. And a couple of weeks ago, Noll was saying, I'm going to need a truckload of running backs for things don't change around here. Third and three, they have Ouija Thompson in as an extra receiver. And he takes the pass and gets the first down. The 6'6", 210-pounder out of Florida 
sustained. It's stopped by Louis Wright, and the Steelers convert on third down. It's first and ten. Key to that was the pass protection. They gave Malone time, and we'll watch BG. He's man-to-man -man now with Louis Wright, number 20. They're working on Louis, or they are getting him in a man-to-man -man situation. That drive to the inside by Ouija just carried Louis with him. He was able to break it back out, and the time that Malone was given enabled him to complete that ball. It's a slow developing play. First and ten, Steelers at the Bronco 33. No score. 7-12 to go in the period, and the pass intended for Abercrombie is incomplete as Malone goes down. Tom Jackson, who is the oldest starting linebacker in the league at the age of 35, decked him. And a couple of gray hairs in here tonight. The Donnie Shell, the strong safety for the Steelers, is also 34. He's the oldest starting defensive back. Second and 10. Steelers at the Bronco 33. Steelers trying to cash in off the fumble by Sammy Weiner. Abercrombie, and nothing happening over that way. Andre Townsend is there, number 61, the third year man out of Mississippi. And Hughes comes back in now for. Pittsburgh, along with Ehrenberg, as Abercrombie goes out on third and long. It's third and nine at the 32-yard line. Calvin Sweeney is in the game, and he's wide left, but Malone looks the other way and throws, and it's really Tony Lilly, the nickelback. Lilly, who has really been pressing the free safety, Steve Foley was right in there. He should have picked it off. There's no question. What it really was was a trailer underneath the Ehrenberg. He was coming in behind Louis Lips and John Stallworth. Stallworth actually was the open man, and Malone again could feel the pressure. You saw it coming in from behind him on the right side. Well, he could feel the hot breath, and he knew he had to get rid of it. Now, Gary Anderson, one of the best, but a 50-yard attempt, his career best is 55. the distance but not the accuracy and let the Steelers come off the field not able to capitalize on the winder fumble 620 to go in a scoreless first period Contains no additives or preservatives. Purity you can see, quality you can taste. To know no boundaries, to let yourself free. No, no boundaries is what the world should be. Wherever there are investment opportunities, Merrill Lynch is there with the help you need to make the most of them. Because at Merrill Lynch, we believe your world should know no boundaries. The Mercedes-Benz Driving Simulator, a laboratory that moves. Computerized hydraulics producing realistic driving forces. Computerized projectors creating a lifelike driving world. Allowing engineers to analyze the responses of ordinary drivers in extraordinary moments. Duplicating any driving situation in total safety. Mercedes-Benz continues to learn the secrets of automotive science. And the automotive world continues to learn from Mercedes-Benz. I'm David Hartman in the Philippines. Now that Marcos is gone, can Corazon Aquino make democracy work here? We'll learn more this week on Good Morning America. Quarterback Mark Malone probably talking to Tom Moore, the offensive coordinator upstairs, who found the only man on that last play that was double covered. Wide open to Stallworth. And out of the backfield, Ehrenberg had attracted a pair of defenders, and Malone tried to force it in there, almost had it picked off, and they had to settle for that long field goal attempt. 
First and ten as Elway throws on first down to Sampson, who's taking the place of Vance Johnson, and he gets it out to the 40-yard line. Stopped by Harvey Clayton. Sampson will see a lot of action now in Johnson's absence. He got a chance to start a couple of years back, but couldn't maintain it. Dropped passes and was pretty much relegated to a reserve role, but the injury has now changed that. He did have a good night against the Steelers last year in the meeting between these two teams, catching four passes, including one for a touchdown. They have him in there when they really have a lot of speed, and a rookie from Purdue named Mark Jackson. They have Samson in there, I think, primarily because he has the experience. Second and two as they send Sewell in motion. And Lang pitches it back to the three-speaker to Elway, who throws back to Sewell, and it's a first down. Well-designed play. That was designed for the touchdown, but it also, as we mentioned earlier, being one of the gadget plays, it had a checkoff. And Elway looks quickly to Watson, who had taken it deep. The first look, of, you'll see Elway take it downfield. That was to see Watson. who He was well covered. The Steelers reading it all the way, but he had that checkoff man. In other words, he didn't have to throw it away, and he was able to go to the checkoff man, Sewell, and still get the first down. Got to love the Broncos already tonight. Double reverse. Flea flicker. They pick up the first down, first and ten. Makes you hesitate, Al, on defense. At their own effective. 49-yard line is Sammy Winder. Doesn't go anywhere. And it'll be second down and 12. David Little is there and also Edmund Nelson, fifth-year man out of Auburn. You know, the Steelers were 7-9, a losing season for the first time since 1972 last year, but they were rated sixth defensively in the entire league where they have their problem is getting the points up on the board. They're 12th against the rush, but they were second against the pass, and yet they didn't do that well in sack totals, having only 36 when the Giants led the league with 68. But they're a fine pass defensive team. Great linebacking on the outside. Elway out of the shotgun. There was movement in the line, but no flag, and Elway gets sacked back at the 40-yard line. Whistle had blown. They were all over Elway. Steelers fans all excited. They thought they might have got the football back to shoot. Somebody ripped it out of there, and Gary Dunn came out of the pile with the ball, but the sack will be back at around the 40-yard line. This time, John couldn't get away. You see linebacker Robin Cole, number 56, is there. The Steelers are using a lot of blitzing, and it is dangerous because Elway can spin away from it, and you'll usually find individual coverage. There's Gary Dunn covering the ball. The whistle had blown when Elway was in the grass, but they brought Brian Hinkle, and they brought Robin Cole on the blitz. didn't have an effect right there. You can see Elway shouting to be heard, and offside is the call, but it's against Pittsburgh. Pittsburgh was coming with a safety blitz, if you will. Actually, they were bringing Chris Sheffield, the rookie from Albany State. Watch 41, bottom of your screen now. Somebody got a little jump on it, and I think it was the rookie, Outside, Sheffield. Number 41, defense. He was just a little Still eager. Fighting. Filling in for Dwayne Woodruff, and that will keep it alive for Denver. We saw Woodruff get hurt in that preseason game we did in Dallas, and he got hurt on the punt return unit. Tough injury to Woodruff, one of their fine defensive backs, probably the best one they have, but a great opportunity for young Chris Sheffield, a rookie free agent from, free agent from Albany State. Third down and 14, they have to get to the Steeler 41, and Elway looking for a lot more to Watson. Watson comes back, but can't make the catch. Clayton was surrounding him, but Watson was able to come back on the underthrown ball and nearly come down with it. You gotta love Steve Watson. He does not have the speed to be doing what he's been doing. Now this is a, from the reverse angle, you'll see Watson come back to it. That play designed, by the way, to get Elway out in the flat. The coverage there by Harvey Clayton. This is a ball he certainly should have caught because he came back and Clayton had overrun the ball, but again, the play designed well. We're seeing some unusual offensive plays by Denver, but I said at the very top of the show, they are an unusual football team. That was a rolling pocket, if you will, and Elway was behind it. Just couldn't get the ball quite far enough to watch it. Jack Wheel, and that is the way he pronounces it, W-E-I-L, and Rick Woods is back to receive at his own 15-yard line. 3.43 to go in the period. 
Pass to Beauty. Taken at the 12 by Woods. Pass to 20. Out of bounds at the 24-yard line. And so Malone and the Steelers take over with three minutes and 33 seconds to go in the first quarter in Pittsburgh the Broncos and the Steelers nothing nothing IBM presents you make the call Jim McMahon of the Bears passes to Dennis McKinnon who deflects the ball into the end zone where it is intercepted by David Greenwood of the Buccaneers who then rolls untouched into the field of play now you make the call where do you spot the ball Computers? Who's got time to figure out how to use them? That's how the owners of a clothing store, a father and son, felt about personal computers. Until they got one. And the catering business. Until they got one. We're IBM, and we've seen some very skeptical people become very enthusiastic. And that makes us proud. Because we have more computers helping more small businesses than anybody. IBM Personal Computers. Small business is getting big on them. What call did you make? When a defender intercepts in the end zone and rolls into the field of play, the ball is spotted in the field of play. It's been a long day, Walter. But I know you've still got something left. Yeah, you've got energy from 100% whole wheat. Wheaties energy. Hey there, Walter. Steelers take over at their own 25-yard line. Chuck Knoll took over in 69. Well, they won in 13, Frank, and then all of a sudden the turnaround. Not bad training. He played for Paul Brown, had his first coaching job under Tip Gilman with San Diego, and then worked under Don Shula before he came here. But he was 1-13 that first year, but he turned it all around after the season of 72. Four Super Bowl championships. Steelers first and 10 from the Pittsburgh 25-yard line. Malone, flushed out, throws on the run, going deep for Lips, kicked and incomplete. One-on-one -on -one with Steve Wilson. Louis Lips again, the intended receiver, Steve Wilson, with fine coverage, chased out of the pocket there by the linebacker, Jim Ryan, and then just underthrown a little bit. Lips tried to get back in it. Wilson, who's only 5'10", was able to get up and knock it away. See it again. Just underthrown a little bit, with Malone under pressure, chased out of the pocket by Jim Ryan. A lot of blitzing that on the part of both teams. Second and ten with Stallworth wide left and lips wide to the right. Abercrombie is the eye back, and Abercrombie drops it at the 25-yard line, and Jim Ryan was right there to belt him anyway. Well, quarterbacks very much in the news. We told you about Montana. And if you've not heard yesterday, the Indianapolis Colts who picked up Gary Hogaboom from the Dallas Cowboys in the offseason. Second game of the season, Orange Bowl, the fumble right there. And then Hogaboom, as it turns out, un very unfortunately for him and for the Colts, picks it up, turns it into a good game, but then Lyle Blackwood wrestles him down. And as it turned out, even though it doesn't look like it was that serious when he got up on the sideline, a separated shoulder and enough of a separation that he's gone for the year. That's a real tough break for Indianapolis. And, of course, Hogaboom, he really had a great opportunity there. Unhappy, of course, in Dallas for the past couple of years. And Indianapolis, a much improving football team. Meanwhile, the referee has just informed the crowd that the clock is not operating at the moment. It is stuck on... 332, so the time is now being kept on the field. We're down to about the three-minute mark of the first period. Third and ten. Malone under pressure. Screen is set up. Hughes makes the catch and gets belted at the 24-yard line. David Hughes, and that's Mecklenburg, number 77, along with Randy Robbins. Steelers is coming with the screen, trying to make the defense of the Denver Broncos think a little bit. They got the pass pressure they, that they anticipated they were getting, but they were also able to cover the screen. And once again, it's Carl Mecklenburg, who is 
literally all over the field for the Broncos. Will Hyde is back at his own 30-yard line. And again, Newsom to kick. Good snap. They put the pressure on from the outside, but he gets the kick away. And it's fielded at the 24-yard line by Will Hyde. And he takes it back out to the 39-yard line, where Carr is in on the tackle. So... Thus far, it's been a Zigfield Follies first quarter. One, two, three, kick. 52-yard punt, 12-yard return. That's no goose right there. Uh, here's something. Same year as Elway was picked number one by Baltimore. Mecklenburg was picked number 12. Now, there are very few 12th-round draft picks still around. But Mecklenburg is a pro bowler from a year ago. Led the team in sacks a year ago. They move him all over from linebacker to defensive end to inside. And he is a method player. <laughs> he gets excited. He fires up the entire defense. He is the hub of it, particularly on the pass rush. First and 10 from the 39-yard line. With Sewell in motion out of a split back formation. And Winder taking it on a squeak and cutting it back inside. Sammy takes it out to the 45-yard line for a gain of about six. It'll be second and four. Just good running by Winder. We mentioned he was a 1,000-yard rusher a couple of years ago. Here he is taking perhaps a little too wide, but breaks it back against the grain. Got a block by Mark Cooper out in front of it. The flag is down, but we're watching Winder as he spun and twisted for about seven yards. Illegal block, number 30, offense. Still first down. That's Steve Sewell. So that negates it. And it will be first down back at the 29-yard line after the 10-yard march off. First and 20. Well, Thursday will be uh, not far from here. Cleveland, where the Browns, who came from behind yesterday to win over Houston, Meet the Bengals, who came from behind to win in overtime over Buffalo. 8 o'clock start, Eastern Time, Thursday. Bernie Kozar and Boomer Esaias are the quarterbacks that you will see on Thursday night. And Kozar really coming into his own. First and 20, Elway, and it's in and out of the hands of Gene Lang. It was right there for him. Darryl Sims, a disappointment last year, the number one pick in 85 out of Wisconsin, put the pressure on Elway, forcing him to get rid of it. I don't know what you can do if you're a quarterback. You can't catch it for him, and Elway had it right on target. Could have put it out in front of him a little bit, but one you most certainly should have caught. Probably saved quite a shot, Gene Lang did, because Brian Hinkle, one of the heavy hitters for the Steelers, number 53, was really zeroing in on him. Second and 20, Elway is three out of eight. 25 yards, a very slow start. Sewell is in motion, bottom of the screen. And Elway under pressure again, and Sewell drops it. So Elway is three out of nine with a couple of errors. He's had about four drops on him now. Watson had a deep one a while ago. A few moments ago, it was Lang, and now it's Sewell. Danny Reeves. He used to be involved in a lot of option plays with the Dallas Cowboys. He was a University of South Carolina quarterback in their Hall of Fame down there, as a matter of fact, but went on to become a player coach. That's hard to do for the Dallas Cowboys. And in 1981, was tapped to take over the Denver Broncos from a very popular Red Miller who had been to the Super Bowl a couple of years prior to that, but he's done a great job. Third down and 20 from the 29-yard line. Elway protected this time. Screen to Will Hyde, and he gets by Brian Hinkle. Got his foot and got him down. And so the Broncos are sputtering at the outset. No way he's not being helped by drop balls. As he comes off the field and the punting unit comes in again. Great crowd, isn't it? Mm. They're watching a team that was shut out and I'm sure they watched it on television 30 to nothing. First shut out. In, in the opening day for the Pittsburgh Steelers in, what, 53 years? And here they're really making the noise for them. In the history of their franchise, wheeled the kick for the third time, and back is Rick Woods at his own 29. Again, the time is being kept on the field. We are in what I would assume is the final two minutes of the first quarter. 29-yard line. Woods 
brings it back out to the 34-yard line. Woods is back there, in case you're wondering, because of a hamstring that has been troubling Louis Lips, one of the dangerous return men in this game. They decided they'd just let him work at the wide receiver position. And so we're watching Woods back on the punch tonight. USC and Frank Gifford is no longer there to take on ninth-ranked Baylor. Or Clemson taking on Georgia, our CFA presentation. College football today begins at 3 Eastern time on Saturday. The Trojans did rather well for you on Saturday night. All right. And you're right. I haven't been there in a long time. We have told there's 54 seconds remaining in this quarter. Again, the official time being kept on the field, and we'll try and stay as close as we can to it. First and 10. Again, the Steelers go to the air on first down. Malone has great protection. Then has to dump it off to Preston Gothard, and he takes it to the 44-yard line. And if you follow the Steelers, you know they almost never throw to the tight end. They didn't last week. They did only a dozen times all of last year. And Malone with a smile as everybody deep with covers, and he hits Gothard the tight end. They didn't want to then either. <laughs> they were covered downfield. Techno really believes that he will get a different man in there when he wants to use a pass that would go to a tight end. And that man has been Ehrenberg, who is playing tonight sparingly with a very sore shoulder. But he gets rather defensive when you ask him about the production of his tight ends. And you don't really like to get him too defensive. He can put those feelies on you and make you feel like an idiot. He's going to get a little defensive right here because Malone I think has been forced to take a timeout. I say I think because maybe it's the end of the quarter. It is a timeout. Again, with the clock not operating, we have to rely on getting our information from the field. And so even though the clock shows zero, Malone did take a timeout. There are a, a few seconds remaining in the first quarter. You talked about Chuck Knoll. He's right in the middle with the headset there in all his years here with the Steelers. He has never been one who has gone out and made the big trade. And when you ask him about that, you, he'll say, well, why do you want to inherit other people's problems? And that's what you primarily get when you make the trades. And the draft has not been spectacular over the past few years. And a lot of that has been because, well, the, the players who have been maturing right now came out of the years when Chuck Noll was one, two, three, or four and drafting uh, way down on the list. He'd be drafted 25, 26, 27, and those are the kinds of players that, while well, they are number one draft picks, they, they are not the top picks in the country. So he's rather defensive about it. I like what he says about defense when we ask him about that. How important he thought defense was, he said, well, before you win it, you have to not lose it. And I think when you look at a Chuck Noll team, you think defense first and offense later. And it's been that way for years. Meanwhile, running and passing, oddly enough, tonight, the ball has been in the air 22 times and on the ground only 10 times. There are three seconds, they are telling us, three seconds left in the quarter, and Malone had to use that timeout. And the fact that the clock wasn't operating may have cost him there, otherwise he would have let the quarter run out. Meanwhile, they get the first down as Abercrombie takes it across the 45 to the 47 yard line but Malone unable to see a clock had to take a timeout before the quarter and there's the gun so we played one Pittsburgh and Denver are scoreless at Three Rivers fifteen minutes is what it says right now so we'll keep an eye on it at the outset here is it We have 22 passes in that first quarter. Let's take a look at the numbers very close. Had the one turnover, and of course the one long field goal attempt on the part of the Pittsburgh Steelers. But coaches will always tell you that when you ask them, what do you want to do? Mm -hmm. Oh, we want to establish the running game. Then they go out and throw the ball 22 times in one quarter. Maybe not for Yelp. Second down and eight. As Malone goes deep looking for lifts and incomplete. Lips reaching for it, and he was covered by Louis Wright. That's a pretty good matchup right there. You've got Lips emerging as a superstar, and Louis Wright has been around for 12 years. Good coverage. Now watch Louis Wright. He's right there. Lips had given him an in move just prior to that. 
And Wright didn't buy it at all. Uh, they continue to work on Louis Wright, and he has had a lot of single coverage, and he's come up with a good job on almost every occasion. In terms of injuries, too, the Broncos missing Haynes back there. He's on injured reserve. With a full thigh muscle, they should get him back in a couple of weeks. On third down and eight, it's Malone throwing and incomplete intended for Ehrenberg, who had to dive for it, and the crowd gets on the Steeler offense again. They love the defense. All of the cheering has been for the D, but no for the O. I'll tell you, 9 of 27, as Malone was a week ago. Those passes you have to complete. I mean, that could have well been a first down. It should have been a first down. Strange sort of reaction, wasn't it? Was that a grin? As he looked at Ehrenberg, I'm not sure you can afford to be grinning when you haven't scored in five periods. At the 16-yard line, Will Height receives the punt. And from there, will the Broncos commence their next drive as Elway gets a final word from Reeves and heads back in. Holy smokes, what is this? is Scott Campbell, the backup quarterback, and there he is, and they also have a rookie, Bubby Brister, who's number three. Malone, 4-12, 31 yards, one sack. Broncos have it at their own 17-yard line. We're in the first minute of the second quarter. Al Michaels and Frank Gifford with you from Pittsburgh. And Sammy Winder breaks it past the 20, has the first down, and gets out to the 33-yard line. Southern Mississippi, fifth round choice in 82. Got a couple of guards out in front of it. Ken Lanier, Mark Cooper. Good block over in the left side by Ken Lanier. Springs Winder out for a nice pickup out at the 32 yard line. First and ten. Winder and Lang are the running backs. Samson goes in motion to the same side as Watson, and they give it to Winder. into the pile at the 40-yard line. And it's a face mask against Pittsburgh. So holding against Denver, face mask against the Steelers. Here's McElwee. Five-yard face mask foul on the defense, number 34. Holding against the offense. Penalties offset. Replay the down. Down to be replayed. Holding is on 64 offense. That's Billy Bryan. We understand we're on backup audio at the moment, and that's obviously in the process of being rectified. Put another quarter in the slot, would you? Get another plumber up here. <laughs> I think I can almost hear you. First and 10 from the 32-yard line. Elway firing it. Then Samson, he takes it at the 40 and gets it to the 42 and very close to a first down. Now, we talked about a strong arm. You saw it right there. Elway just whipping that ball. He has one of the strongest arms I think I've ever seen. That was a little short out, and he just had it on a line all the way. And he got it. <laughs> no question. An official's time out here for the change to be brought. brought. And the thing about Elway, he was a great star in, in high school in Southern California, highly recruited, went to Stanford, and continued their great quarterback tradition. And they knew he was going to be a star from the outset. There was never any question as a freshman. As you can see, they're just shy of the first down, but Elway went to uh, the farm, as they call it, at Palo Alto with glowing credentials, and he certainly didn't disappoint. You can watch him grow up, as we have over the past four years. He came up sort of a wide-eyed kid with great raw talent. Danny Reeves kind of took him under his arm, nurtured him along, and all of a sudden he has become a kind of a quarterback that reads much more quickly. He knows where to, he can take a look at a pass pattern, see, see it develop. He can make his quick reads that he couldn't do a couple of years ago, and he's better this year than he was last year. And more than that, he's become a leader on this team. Unanimously voted the captain of this team offensively. Let's see what he does on second and inches, and he keeps it on the ground where Winder picks up the first down. Sammy gets it out to the 46-yard line. And so the Broncos are on the move. 12 minutes, 35 seconds remaining in the first half. A scoreless half thus far in Pittsburgh. And Danny Reeves is getting what he wanted to have happen. Again, centered. 
Left guard, Keith Bishop, the right guard, they're leading on the opposite side as Winder follows the blocking and gets the first down out of the 46-yard line. And this is what Danny Reeves wanted to do, and highly unusual. They're moving the ball with ease now on the ground against the Steelers. And he has Watson in motion, going back the other way. So he and Sampson are on the same side, and coming across was Gerald Williams, the rookie out of Auburn. Grossman, number 98, defense, still first down. You might say why the coaches like to run the football. Well, if you don't follow this game, uh, it's quite simple. If you can run the football, you literally can do just about what you want with it. It means you can slow down any kind of a pass rush if the defensive linemen are thinking, well, I've got to watch the run, I've got to play my position. And more than that, you can come back with a play action, taking the run and going to the receiver. You can do just about what you want to do if you can establish that running game. So we kid about it, but it is the effective thing in this game still today. Back to the basics. First and five, and Winder has it go through his hands. Elway gets dropped as the pressure was put on that time by Keith Gary out of Oklahoma. And again, another error on the receiver. You've got to catch these, and Elway's had about five of them now. Robin Cole, by the way, in there on the hit. Robin Cole probably lost in the outside linebacking fame of Brian Hinkle and Mike Merriweather, but since he's moved inside, he's become a fine linebacker. Just for baseball, it'll be a lot of E3s thus far. Elway's been on target. Oh, well, that's that pass again. He yeah. put it out there. It's Watson. And Watson is close to a first and has it. And that's the 300th catch of Steve Watson's career. Somebody puts on that. Great form, just fires it in there, uses the body. Harvey Clayton, not bad coverage, but that ball was there in an instant. You can be covering the receiver well. If you've got a quarterback that can gun it like that, he's going to beat you in most occasions. And Elway loves to force that ball in there. He's getting a little more coy about it, but he'll still try to get it in there. First and 10 from the 43-yard line. Draw, winder, he gets two, takes it to the 41-yard line as we come down to the 11-minute mark. And David Little is in on the tackle for the Steelers. David Little alternates with Dennis Winston at that strong inside left side linebacker position. He was the leading tackler on the team in 1985. Brother Larry, of course, played guard for the Dolphins. And well. Mm-hmm. Very. Second and eight. With Stuhl going in motion, Elway rolling, throwing, wide. Open at the 31 yard line, the tight end Clarence K. Well, that was all arm. He was under tremendous pressure, being pursued by Keith Gary, sort of a designated pass rusher for the Steelers. Take a look at him 92. Elway with a little fake. Gary steps inside the block, and Elway just flips it on the dead run. Didn't even turn his body to set up and gets it out to K. <laughs> He's impressive, Al. Every time you watch him, he gets better. In his fourth season, he's picked up a first down, and he gives on an inside handoff to Lane over the right side, inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Second down and seven as Mike Merriweather makes the tackle. Merriweather in his fourth year out of Pacific. And one of the best. He's not big at 6'2 and 215. But he is by far and away the best pass rushing linebacker the Steelers have. A couple of years ago, he had 15 sacks. They eased off on it a little last year, but they are using him in a little more of an aggressive way this year. Second and seven now as the Broncos have mounted their most impressive drive, and it's Gary Dunn pointing across the line and saying that he was drawn 67, off. 67, defense, and still Mac second down. McElwee says, uh, not a good enough acting job. Twice now the Steelers have been drawn up. You wonder maybe Billy Bryan might have a little something going in there. Maybe a little extra grunt. <laughs> a little strategy played out in the middle of that offensive line. A lot of funny little noises. And a lot of references to your ancestry. All those things taking place down there. <laughs> a lot of hot breath. A place not to be is what I'm trying to say. The trenches. <laughs> Second down and two at the 23. 
hits a couple is Gene Lang. Lang getting close to the first down of the 21-yard line. Lang slightly shaken up earlier, but uh, missed only a couple of plays. And out of Louisiana State, where he did a lot of blocking down there. He was a couple of years ahead of Dalton Hilliard and Gary James, but he really didn't make his mark as a rusher. But Dan Reeves liked him, liked what he saw of him. They drafted him in the 11th round in 84. And here he is in the starting lineup. First and 10 at the 21-yard line. As Elway has a lot of time. Throws. Open is Watson. And Watson is there for the touchdown. That was beautiful. Watson and Samson both lined up over the left side. They both ran what appeared to be post patterns. And Watson really sold it to the defensive back covering him, which was Harvey Clayton. He sold a post pattern all the way. Elway gives him a little pump fake. 81 is Watson now. Drive to the inside, even look to the inside, and he spun Clayton right around, and again, it's that strong arm. Clayton got back into it. He recovered well, but Elway had it on a string, zipped it out there. <laughs> there are not many people who can run that pattern, and there are not hardly anyone who can throw the football on that kind of a line. His extra point is perfect. And so Watson, who will really have to pick up the slack in the absence of Johnson, and a man who caught a touchdown pass last week, does it again tonight. 7 0 Denver. Well, what do you know? Brand new Pontiac Grand Am. Got the injected 3 liter V6, the aero skirts, composite headlamps. Sports suspension, the special buckets, the big analog gauges, the whole enchilada. Yeah, you big ham. You own one hot car. Around here, raisins are big business. So when Kellogg started putting two scoops of raisins in the raisin brand, I knew we had problems. It's simple. The law of raisins. You put two scoops in each box. You sell more boxes. Bam! Raisin shortage. I respect Kellogg's, but that's a lot of raisins. You know what I tell people? You got a backyard, plant raisins. Fiber-rich Kellogg's Raisin Brand. Two scoops is a lot of raisins. Nobody but General Motors offers so many deals on so many 1986 cars for so many people. The big one. Choose 2.9 annual percentage rate GMAC financing on all new 1986 GM cars and most light-duty trucks. And slash your monthly payments. Or choose rebates up to $1,500 depending on make or model selected. The big one. Only from General Motors. The Cincinnati Bengals, guided by the hot hand of Boomer Esiason. The Cleveland Browns, Bernie Kozar hopes he can match the firepower. An EDC Thursday night NFL special. In Pittsburgh, Al Michaels and Frank Gifford with you. Ten plays in a drive that consumed more than six minutes and a 21-yard touchdown pass from Elway to Watson. Denver on top, seven to nothing as Rich Parlis kicks off for the Broncos. To receive, and he takes it a yard in, and he'll come out with it to the chagrin of the crowd. You can hear the collective groan, and they were right. He takes it back only to the 13-yard line. As you look at Watson's catch again, Watson's well, a little fake now. Elway will pump, take a quick look. Watson has given him a look as if he's going to turn to the post, breaks it back out against Harvey Clayton. Had Clayton spun completely around a man who is very responsible for getting. Denver in position to get that 21-yard touchdown is Sammy Winder. Some nifty run and a couple of very fine first down runs. So the Steelers trying to generate something offensively. First and 10 from their own 14-yard line. 7.50 to go in the hand. 7-0 Broncos. Pollard. And that meant only a couple. So the Steelers shut out last week. And they've been shut out now for an excess of 83 minutes. Mecklenburg makes the tackle. He's everywhere. Mecklenburg lining up here at linebacker, going down the line of scrimmage, staying out of the traffic, and then stepping into the hole as it develops and getting in there for the stop. And Frank Pollard.
yard. Gets a couple of yards out of that. We mentioned earlier the damage to Joe Montana, the 49ers' neck was or back was not as extensive as it was thought it was going to be. Surgery today, and at halftime we're going to be talking to 49er head coach Bill Waltz, and he has talked with the orthopedic surgeon, and we'll get a full report then. Play action, and Malone has Stallworth open and overshoots him at the 30-yard line. Stallworth was there. Harden hit him. The pass was too high, and the crowd is ready for Campbell. Crowd didn't like it. John Stallworth, of course, one of the heroes around here for many a year, and he took quite a shot. Was up for the ball, and Mike Harden put one right on him, and that one, one that could have attracted a flag. It was late, right up into the chops. Third Stowarth. down, seven. Stowarth has adapted out of the role of the underneath man rather well. He used to be the deep fly man in the days of Terry Bradshaw, but now with Lips taking it deep, Stallworth has a whole new career working underneath. Malone on third down, and that one is in and out of the hands of Ouija Thompson, who was covered by Louis Wright. Wright's having a big night. They keep going against him, and he's always there. Been around a while, 12 years. Started out at Bakersfield College, as a matter of fact. Went off to San Jose State with a 9-6 sprinter, so he could lose a couple of steps and make up for it with the experience, and he's done that. And again, but that's a ball that should have been caught. A lot of drop balls tonight on the part of Malone is four out of 14 as Will Hike gets ready to, to accept the kick at his own 34. Newsom's kick, deep but not very high, and a run back for Will Hike, but he slips down. It's a break for the Steelers because he had a little bit more room as he takes it back to the 45-yard line. A look there at Louis Wright, whose Broncos lead 7-0, 6.51 to go in the half. Still drawn a blank offensively this year. At least tonight, well, a moral victory of sorts. Anderson did attempt the field goal. And Malone <laughs> has had uh, a lot of drops tonight, as had Elway. Why, I don't know. It's not excessively warm that you would have uh, damp hands from the humidity or the sweat. First and 10 from the 45, and it's knocked down, and it's knocked down by the face of Merriweather. He came in with his hands up. He took it right in the face mask. Right, whether they are using him a little more in the blitz now this year. There he is, number 57. And, and he just hmm. caught it right in the face. Shocked him more than anything, I believe. But they got away from him a little bit with the blitz a year ago after 15 blitzes in 1984. Now they are using him much more. And at least they plan to this season. Second down and 10 as Elway on the draw gives it to Sammy Winder to the 49-yard line. It'll be third and six, and that's Keith Gary. And here's a man who could play a, a key part this year if he can give the Steelers the pass rush that was so lacking at times in 85. It was a number one draft pick a few years ago. Went off to Canada to play a couple of years. Came back 1983, and he is kind of their designated pass rusher. Keith Gary, they bring him in when they drop into their four-man, which they are playing a lot of this evening. Flag was thrown, and McElwee indicating second down and 20 back at the 35-yard line on a holding call. Got a whole lot of folks changing in the Denver huddle as they get long yardage. We get Lang back in, good receiver out of the backfield. He stays in there with Winder. Watson split left, and Sampson is wide to the right. Elway rolling, looking for Sampson. He comes back, but the pass is thrown away. Sampson couldn't get free, and so Elway just threw it away. He was chased by Nelson. That's what I mean about Elway growing up. Uh, Elway probably, as a rookie or in his second year, would have tried to force that in there. He felt that he had to do it all, had to live up to everything that was said about him uh, his great career at Stanford that time he very wisely did not have a receiver he could get it into safely so he just dumped it off and kept the drive alive third and long sure but at least he didn't turn it over it's been a good weekend already for the Elway family father Jack the head coach at Stanford and his cardinal took care of the Texas Longhorns 31 to 20 on Saturday third down and 20 
three wide receivers sent to the right side, and it's Elway going over the middle to Sampson at the 47-yard line, but well shy of the first down. They had a third and 20, and it's a fourth down and seven, and they'll have to kick it away with 5.52 to play in the half. Conservative call, but you don't turn it over. You get it to Sampson, hoping he can break the tackle, get it out with about a 12-yard reception, then hope he can break off the run and get the first down. But what you don't do is you don't turn it over. That's Rick Woods back to receive. And Jack Wheel to punt it away. Good high spiraling kick. Fair catch is called for, but Woods lets it bounce. And it will come back out to the 20-yard line. So let's see if the Steelers... <laughs> what did I do? And... Malone can get things going. It, it was an artistic success, but it wound up as a touchback. Cincinnati and Cleveland in the Battle of the Buckeyes State. Boomer Esiason and the Bengals coming from behind, winning in overtime yesterday over Jim Kelly and the Bills. And then next Monday, the Bears escaping yesterday with an overtime win over Philadelphia 2-0, still minus McMahon against the Packers, who are really staggering. Down from the 20-yard line. Screen is set up, and the one-hand catch is not made by Pollard. Well, on a screen, you're supposed to invite the defense to come on in when they pass the offensive line. You dump it over them, but I'm, when you invite Mecklenburg in there, he'll he'll take everything with him. He pressured Malone into this into an early screen. He got in there a little too tight, right in Malone's face, and we get the incompletion because that screen was really well set up. Second down and 10. That could have been a big play. Looked like it was catchable, but still not a, a very good pass thrown by Malone as Pollard had a reach for it. And there are Malone's numbers dastardly through two games. Second down and 10. Fortunately for the Steelers. How to lose friends with their wide receivers and you're a quarterback putting the ball up that high to the wide receiver because he knew he was going to get popped. Had a wide open John Stallworth who went up for it and he took the shot from Mike Harden. Let's take a look at it again. And they are just dropping a lot of footballs tonight. That's six consecutive incomplete passes. Harden and Lilly, they really sandwiched Stalwart. Third down and 10 Steelers from their own 20. Denver ahead 7-0, five minutes to go in the half. Malone throws over the middle and nearly has it picked off. In and out of the hands of Ken Woodard, the linebacker. And listen to the crowd. He'll hear him now. Tough. He'll be playing for years as a quarterback with Pittsburgh in the shadow of Terry Bradshaw, who did it all and did it all so well. Ken Woodard gets into this and should have picked it off. Number 52, the Denver linebacker, and it will bring out the punting unit. Malone is 4 out of 17 for 31 yards, coming off a 9 out of 27 week. Newsom's kick, Wilhite accepts it at the 34-yard line. And it's a 10-yard run back as he brings it to the 44. 7 to nothing, Denver with 4.47 to play in the first half. And coming up on CFA College Football, a couple of regional battles for you this Saturday as the Trojans off their win against Illinois take on the Baylor Bears, ninth-ranked, or Clemson taking on Georgia between the Hedges and Athens. And college football today begins at 3 o'clock Eastern time. down. Lang. Gain of two. Second down and eight out of the 46. Denver coming right back to the ground game. They used it very successfully on their drive that took them in for the touchdown, even though they had the Elway to Watson combination to get the score. They moved it on the ground very well on that drive, and they're coming right back with it. Second and eight at the 46-yard line. 
4.15 remaining in the first half. Safety blitz. Elway off Wang's hands and incomplete. Blitz was on as Hinkle covered on the play. But there's one thing that John Elway has not captured yet as a pro quarterback, and that is to take something off that ball a little bit. He can sting your hands, and he often does just that. And Lang had a little bit of a edge on the linebacker that was covering him on that defensive maneuver that was a safety blitz. He was one for one, but Elway just had too much on it to handle. Which quarterback had the best touch you ever witnessed? I'll tell you, it's hard to beat Dan Marino right now. Mm. And real touch, Montana. They're different quarterbacks. Third and eight. Elway underthrows it, intended for Samson, and he was covered by Donnie Elder. Probably does not throw that out to the right as well as he does to the left. Let's take a look at it again. Samson taking it down, selling it to Donnie Elder, who was just picked up from the Jets at the beginning of the season. They let him go. Elder in there defensively for the Steelers. But it's hard to throw to your right because you really throw to your with your arm unless you turn your body and then get the follow through. Elway gets it naturally when he throws to the left. So he underthrew that ball. Jack Wheel standing at his 30. You saw Woods back at his own 15. Not much distance and a fair catch, and it's made at the 24-yard line by Woods. And Malone will stay in there. And how much longer can Noel afford to go with Malone the way things are going, Frank? Well, he doesn't really have much of a choice. I think he certainly does not want to totally shatter a very fragile ego. And Mark Malone took quite a hammering in Seattle a week ago when he was 9 of 27. Chuck Noll went all the way with him, stayed with him. He's very patient, Chuck Noll. That's one of his great virtues, and you need it in coaching. He's a fine teacher, but behind him is a six-foot quarterback named Scott Campbell, a rookie behind him, Bobby Brister. Who do you go to? Malone has proved in the past that he can do it. First and ten, and it's off the hands of Pollard. Somebody broke that pattern, pure and simple. Pollard was right in front of the other Steeler receiver. And they don't line up like ducks in this game. There it is. Lips had set into a hitch. Pollard moved right into the pattern, set up right in front of it. I think that Malone was looking for Lips, number 83. Here he is. And Pollard got right into the pattern. Could have been a disaster. Deflected and picked off. Eight consecutive incompletions, 354 to go in the half. Denver ahead 7-0. And that was not Malone's fault, nor have been the drops. Second and 10 from the 24-yard line. Complete to the 35, and a Bronx cheer in western Pennsylvania on the catch by Stallworth. Stallworth working against Steve Wilson. Steve Wilson, 5-10. Wasn't bad coverage. Former Dallas Cowboy found a home in Denver. Stallworth driving, driving. Wilson right with him, right with him too long. The official could have dropped the flag on that if he wanted to. Now he can make that contact for five yards. Wilson went for about 12 with it. First and 10 from the 36 yard line. Malone throws and he hits Stallworth again at the 49 yard line and he really gets racked up. Hunley is right there, along with Steve Wilson. They pay the price as wide receivers. They turn it back inside. And you get it in there a little slowly. They know they're going to get a shot. And the good ones, they're the ones that hold on to it year in and year out, just like this one. John Stallworth again. Wilson is the man they're working against. Stallworth knew he was going to get that shot. Holds on and gets the first down in midfield. 2.35 to go in a half as we come down to the end of the half. The Steelers have two timeouts remaining, and it's Ehrenberg. And that sort of stops the flow of this drive momentarily. It'll be second down and nine with a ball right at the 50-yard line. That's Darren Como in on the tackle. they got to run him once in a while to keep him semi-honest. Pittsburgh really relying on their passing game now here in the late moments of the first half, but you've got to keep it on the ground once in a while, at least to keep those defensive linemen from thinking nothing but pass. Meanwhile, we'll see if they can get the playoff before the two-minute warning, and they I don't think do. Can you believe that? 
they line up and it wasn't as if they were waiting for the two minute warning they were unaware of exactly what the clock was saying as it rolled down to exactly two and the snap was made but it was too late seven nothing denver unaware of the clock couldn't get it off he's got two timeouts remaining the ball is at the 50 yard line his club trails seven nothing it's second down ten midfield. He's got Stallworth wide left, Lips wide to the right. Malone going deep for Lips. Double covered, tipped and volleyball away. Louis Wright covering on the play along with Dennis Smith. Bit of a wasted play. You have to have a check off there. They had double coverage all the way. Louis Wright in great position. Dennis Smith, a Pro Bowl safety man, had lined up. They had him covered inside out. Malone just threw the ball up in the air. He, he actually was throwing the ball away, but he almost had it picked off. But it, it's a ball where you, you don't throw. You come into an underneath man, keep something alive, get something out of it. He knew as soon as he looked up, this was going to be double coverage. He couldn't have missed it. 49 and 20, they're there. Mm. You got to find somebody else. Third down and 10. Steelers' deepest penetration tonight was the 32-yard line. Once they missed the 50-yard field goal attempt by Anderson. Malone throwing underneath, and it's incomplete, intended for Rich Ehrenberg. And another drop. It would have been short of the first down. But again, another drop for Malone. Maybe understandable, and Ehrenberg was really questionable coming in tonight. He had a slightly separated shoulder of a week ago and obviously the man who forced Malone to go to Ehrenberg is John Stallworth and Malone is jawing on him right there. That wasn't a smile right there. He came off running before. Newsom the punt with 140 to go in the half. It's Will Hyde at the 14 and he takes it back out to the 18 yard line. So Denver will begin to strive from there. You know, Frank, you mentioned, you, and you're right, you're dealing with a fragile ego. You've got Malone, he's your guy. But, you know, if you're Nolan and you go back into that locker room right now, you're looking at a game and a half, and you've been shut out, and you've really got nothing going. He's got to start thinking about, at least thinking about Campbell. Well, they were struggling their final preseason game against the Giants. They have been struggling uh, right along, but nevertheless, I think that when you... Think about what you do to your number one quarterback. If you pull him out of there, you, it becomes, well, how do you trade off? Trade off hurting him and maybe really ruining a season for him. And do you have really the strength to go to on the bench? And I don't think they have enough Scott Campbell or Bobby Bristol, the rookie. First and 10 from the 19-yard line and over the middle, it's Watson. And he has a first down on the 12-yard pickup. And the Broncos have all of their timeouts left, and they spend their first right here. That stops the clock. Denver has it first and 10 at its own 31-yard line with a minute and 25 seconds to play in the first half. Well, quarterbacks, the topic tonight with Elway, one of the best in the league and on his way to becoming maybe as good as they've been. And Malone having his troubles tonight. And of course, the other story this weekend is Montana. And we'll be talking to Bill Walsh, the head coach of the San Francisco 49ers at halftime. So there's Elway, a man who really grew up with a coach. His father, a high school coach and then a, a college coach at Cal State Northridge. And remember when John was recruited by Stanford, there were some rumors at the time that maybe his father would come along and get the job. And isn't it ironic that Elway went through his whole career at Stanford, mainly under the tutelage of Paul Wiggin, and then John leaves and his father does get the Stanford job. Quite a family, too. I've had an opportunity to meet them very involved in a lot of community affairs on the Bay Area, as you well know, Al. And they have to be proud of this genetic marvel because he is that. He is one of the fine arms, and as I said earlier tonight, he just keeps improving almost with every game. Got the size for it. He's 6'3". He's 2'10". Got the head for it. He's got the mentality. There's something that burns inside this youngster that says, you're just not going to beat me. From the 31-yard line, a little shovel pass a la Lee Gross Cup to Steve Sewell who takes it uh, just about back to the line of scrimmage. Hurry up offense. They've called a couple of plays in the huddle just on the thought that it would not pick up good yardage. Shotgun, second down, nine. And he rifles it to Wilhite, and Wilhite, I believe, has the first down. He stepped out right about the stripe. Good 
read quickly by Elway. They were giving Elway that, so he took it. He has plenty of time. He has a couple of timeouts, so he took the 11-yard pickup, gets the first down, and also stops the clock. He read it right away, didn't fool around deep because the Steelers were doubling both the wides deep. Two timeouts remaining for the Broncos. First and 10 at the 41, 103 to play. First half, shotgun. Elway, high throw and incomplete intended for Sampson. And he was covered by Harvey Clayton in the corner. Another one that could have been caught. It was high and a difficult catch, but it was certainly one that could have been caught. And Elway, I think, is blaming himself. Now, we'll look at it again. Sampson with the drive, making it look good. Clayton on the coverage, goes up, got his hands on it, but it's incomplete. Stops the clock, 58 seconds. Second and 10, Broncos from the 41-yard line. Sampson left and Watson right out of the gun. Full blitz. Gets it away. The timing, Vance Johnson, the speedster who went out to the Raider game with the knee injury, would have been coming back for this one. Samson has good speed, but he's not at the blazing speed of a Vance Johnson. Elway has worked all through training camp with Vance Johnson. He's worked in until this past week with Vance Johnson, and he put this pass up under tremendous pressure with a full safety blitz. Had it been Vance Johnson, I think he got six points. As it was, it was a great effort by Clint Sampson. The timing is so important between the quarterback and the receiver, and you saw it right there. Third down, 10, Broncos, Sewell goes in motion from the 41-yard line. They send everyone into the pattern, including Will Hyde, and Will Hyde gets decked, and a nice play there by Clayton, who had to fend off the blocker. Billy Bryan was right there, and Clayton came barreling through. Elway again wanted to go downfield, has to settle for this, gets Bryan in front of it. And a good play by Clayton, who it does appear as if the Denver Broncos are working on this evening. 5'9", 180 is he, taking care of a man at 6'2", 255. Deep defense again for Pittsburgh. I mentioned earlier they were second in the NFL against the pass a year ago. They were a good, strong defensive team all last year. They just couldn't put points up. They were sixth overall in the league a year ago. And they're playing well tonight. Jack Wheel punting for the sixth time in the game. Rick Woods is back at his 20. And the clock has run out. As the crowd boos, they wanted the Steelers to take a timeout on defense, at least to have some sort of opportunity. And Chuck Knoll figures, I better go back and come up with some new X's and O's for the third period. The rookie out of Purdue and Ken Bell. Bell is on the left. Rookie out of Boston College, ready to receive. Ken Bell from the one. Football at the 25, and I believe the Broncos get it at the 27-yard line. Alertly there is Hackett, the backup tight end, number 85, Joey Hackett. I look at it again. That ball bounced out of that. It could have been a big break for the Steelers. Bell hit very hard. And fortunately for Broncos, the Broncos, they had a sure-handed receiver type there to cover it in Hackett. So Denver, first and 10. From the 27-yard line, Bronx on top. Seven to nothing. Sammy Winder for a gain of about three out to the 30. And it'll be second down, seven. Denver coming right back with what worked for them in the second quarter, and that is the ground game featuring Winder. Again, coaches both telling us before the game, we've got to get the running game going. You get it going, and you have a tremendous edge because you can move the ball, keep control of the game, and come with a play-action pass if you want to. Second and seven, Winder in motion. Elway looks toward Will Height, and then a one-handed catch Watson out to the 37-yard line. He now moves past Haven Moses into number 
three on the Bronco all-time receiving list behind Lionel Taylor and Riley Odoms. Isn't it amazing? Watson had dropped one earlier deep downfield. One hands this one, <laughs> pulls it in, and makes a tremendous catch out of it. Gets the first down. But sometimes the easy ones are the difficult ones. He doesn't drop many, I can tell you that. He came up as a free agent eight years ago, and he has been spectacular. Four catches for him tonight on the ground, and straight up the middle goes Sammy Winder for a gain of a couple. To the 40, it'll be second down eight. And there are the numbers for the first 30 minutes. For Denver, with 152 yards to 66 for the Pittsburgh Steelers. Denver picking up a lot of that on a, their scoring drive that led to their 21-yard touchdown pass. Elway to Watson. The one turnover in the game. Steelers one scoring opportunity, a long field goal attempt by Gary Anderson that was long enough but wide. Second and eight from the 40-yard line. Elway throwing. Will Height. And a penalty flag is thrown as he goes out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Referee tonight, Bob McElwee. And the call going against Pittsburgh. Well, the crowd with its ups and its downs tonight, it is so quiet here right now, relatively speaking. And then there are those bursts, normally for the defense. They've had very little to cheer about offensively tonight. The options are now being explained to Elway here. The play took it out to the 45-yard line. Number 57 defense, five yards, automatic first down. That contact was made by Mike Merriweather beyond the five yards in which he is allowed to harass the receiver. And there's Merriweather in on the tackle. I, for the life of me, I don't know what that was. They said illegal contact. Merriweather came into the play late. Unless it was indeed on Robin Cole, and they just give you the wrong number. It amounts to a first down for Denver from the 45-yard line. Winder on a draw play. Takes it out to the 48. He is stopped there by Gary Dunn, the man in the middle out of the University of Miami. Do you know there are 23 former Hurricanes currently playing in the NFL, and 10 of them are defensive linemen. And both men tonight, Reuben Carter, and there's Campbell, who's shaking his head, but he is warming up on the side but you've got the two nose tackles in there tonight jim burt would be another from miami of the new york giants as the pass is caught at the 46 yard line by steve watson but he is shy of the first down harvey clayton providing the coverage another fine catch by watson and we'll put denver into short yardage we mentioned that Campbell was warming up. He's warming up with Mark Malone. Yeah, I'm just looking down there right now, and he is. And it appears to be Malone who will come in because Malone has Sweeney catching Campbell's passes and then just handing the ball back to him. Even though they both have their helmets on. There's Malone. Third down and one. Winder. Takes his way for the first. Good hard running by Winder. Getting a Black from Brian Cooper. And they've been using him almost exclusively on the ground game. Enough for the first down, barely, but he keeps it going, and the ball is at the 45 as you look over the shoulder of Lewis Lips. Pittsburgh offensive unit waiting to get back in, but the Broncos have other ideas at the outset of the third period as Elway escapes the tackle and throws and has Clarence K. Inside the 20, the tight end is inside the 15. Down he goes at the 11-yard line, run down by Harvey Clayton. So that, Clarence K for the second time tonight, wide, wide open. That's what Elway can do for you. Watch him spin away, and a lot of quarterbacks would have gone down by the safety blitz. Donnie Shell, he spun out and quickly had his composure back together again. He finds K, and K takes a play that could have been a sack back of midfield all the way to the 11-yard line. That is the extra bonus and plus you get with an athletic John Elway. First and 10. Broncos at the 11. Opening drive of the second half. 
10.20 to go, third quarter. Sewell carries out of the tailback spot, and the versatile one takes it to the 10 for a gain of one, and it'll be second down and nine. Now I know why Campbell was shaking his head when we had the hand held on him. He was saying, no, no, I'm not coming in. I'm just warming Malone up. He tried to tell us. <laughs> Elway now. He'll come back with the pass. He's going to put Watson out to the left. Watson is very good down in the end zone. But he also has the big tight end that they like to go to, Clarence K. Not often used as a receiver, but he's good down here. Second down and nine, and Elway fires and behind the intended receiver, Sampson. He's covered on the play by Eric Williams. So it'll be third down and nine from the 10-yard line. Elway had to release that, and there was good coverage by Williams, but Elway felt the pressure and turned it loose. Danny Reeves, by the way, handles the offensive calls. He is working with Mike Shanahan, the offensive coordinator, up in the booth. Elway very happy to have the plays called in, very satisfied with that situation, according to Reeves. Good time for an option pass. You never know what the Broncos are liable to try. Here comes Sewell in motion. He can throw him, but he's going into the pattern this time. Well, wait to the screen for Wilhite. Incomplete. Good pressure that time. Put on by the Steelers, forcing the issue. Fourth down. On comes Carlos. He had the right man. He wanted to get to Wilhite. And you can see that Rick Woods tried to get back into the coverage. That was his man. Wilhite all the way. Elway read it beautifully and just did not put it where it should have been. That was six points as Woods was coming up and it was read well by Will Height. He got to the outside, Elway just didn't get it there. The backup QB, Gary Kubiak, comes in to hold and he'll spot it down at the 18-yard line. 28-yard chip shot for Rich Carlos. thing you know back come the Steelers still down by only seven high snap but they were able to get it down wheel the punter had it down in time and they missed from close in up 30 nothing by Seattle they have had little or no offense here tonight they had one opening drive against Seattle that took them to the six yard line they failed to score on that Another than that, they were even in their final preseason game against the Giants, they were ineffective. So they're on a three-game roll. On first down, play fake, Malone to the air, and it is caught for a first down at the 34 by John Stallworth, who a promising beginning on Pittsburgh's first drive in the third period. This is what really puzzles you, because you have Stallworth on one side, Louis Lips on the other side, and every now and then it works like Clark Rock. He had good protection, did Mark Malone. Stallworth runs a brilliant pattern. He was wide open, and you would think you could just move right down the field, but that has not been the case tonight. There have been drop balls. Malone has underthrown, overthrown, and they just have not generated any kind of a drive. First down from the 35-yard line, and Malone to the air again, throwing to the right side. Man is open. First down, 48, and Lewis lifts. Lou, Lou, Lou goes the crowd. This is what you should expect from these two outside receivers. Two perfectly timed plays and two first downs. Louis Wright again, the defender, but you just have to respect Lips going deep. Wright went to a full sprint with him. Lips planted the foot, came back. He was wide open. You're not going to cover him one-on-one -on -one if your quarterback has time to throw the football, and they're giving Malone time to throw the football. First and 10, Pittsburgh at the 47-yard line. Denver ahead, 7-0, eight minutes to go in the third. And Malone throws complete to Ehrenberg. Slight shoulder separation and all. And he takes it to the 43-yard line, stopped there by Tom Jackson. By the way, as you look into the middle of that Pittsburgh line tonight, and you see something unusual, and 51, Dan Turk is the center. You know who's always there, of course, is Mike Webster, who hadn't missed a game since 1974. But he's on the injured reserve list with a dislocated elbow after playing in 177 straight. And Greenstraw, the rookie first-round draft pick at left guard, 
his first start of the year. Second down and six. A little look in, and it's complete to Lewis left to the first down. And the crowd finally has something to cheer about him. It's not boo, it's Lou. It's so easy, and yet they have struggled with it, not only through the Seattle game, but the first half of tonight. Two outstanding receivers. You protect your quarterback. They're doing just that. And lifts on a simple little slam in right in front of Louie Wright. And you got another first down, and you move right down the field. And where was it earlier? Stallworth, wide left, and lifts his line to the right. From the 33-yard line. Malone playing the same hand, and this time to Ehrenberg at the 28-yard line for a gain of about five. And Ricky Hundley, the linebacker, makes the tackle. And everything must hurt. Again, Ehrenberg with that slightly separated shoulder, but still in there. You get the feeling that Chuck Noll at halftime put up about four or five plays and said, we're going to make these work. And what they are are simple patterns to the outstanding wide receivers, Lips and Stallworth. You work Ehrenberg out of the backfield if you get double coverage out there. And that's all they've done, and they've marched right down the field. And there's going to be nothing fancy, nothing cute. Chuck Noll wants to see the basics work. Malone is five out of five on this drive, and they give it to Hughes, and he takes it to the 24-yard line. So they try to keep a little on it as David Hughes, the backup running back, carry. Hughes, who was recently waived by Seattle, grew up in Hawaii, played his college ball at Boise State, and picked up by the Steelers as insurance. We watched him a couple of times on Monday night, Al. He just had some good games for Seattle. He caught 12 passes in one game against Kansas City for a Seattle pass-receiving single-game record. Third down and one. And it's used, and not this time, as he runs into the Broncos at the 25-yard line. He runs into them collectively, led by Foley and Ryan. Oh, he's serious. And not at the call. Meanwhile, here come Campbell and Anderson. Mm. A beautiful drive. They get it into short yardage situation, and they didn't even come close to making that. They were beat off the line of scrimmage by a good defensive team, but it's not a dominating defensive team. Danny Reeves will tell you that. The Pittsburgh Steelers were just blown away on that when they didn't get the offensive penetration you think you should get. Certainly when you're trying to keep your one drive of the night alive, it's hardened where Denver is slow getting up. The defensive cornerback, who looks to be all right, however. So you have to bring out the place kicker and for what appears to be settling for three points instead of trying to keep a seven-point drive alive. Gary Anderson, who has led the AFC in scoring in each of the last three years, has missed a 50-yarder tonight. This is his second attempt. It comes at an angle. It'll be spotted at the 33. 43-yard kick. Campbell holding. Snap good. Shows the placement. Kick is deep enough. And the kick is perfect. And finally, after, let's see, it would be 100 minutes and 6 seconds, the Steelers score. He knew right away he's perhaps the best in the game today, Gary Anderson, or he certainly will be when he kicks five more and gets to qualify for all-time percentage of accuracy leader. When it comes time to take your business on the road, some weighty problems can arise. Information can disappear, time can be lost in the shuffle, and productivity can take a tumble. Presenting the IBM PC Convertible, a powerful personal computer that easily converts to a full function portable. An IBM PC you can use on a train, a plane, at home, even in your car. It runs many of today's most popular business programs and is available with a modem to let you communicate with other computers and a snap-on printer to let you print reports on the spot. All to make you a big deal on the road and a big hit back in the office. The IBM PC Convertible. One computer for people who really need two. See your authorized dealer or call IBM. This is Jeep's all-new 4-liter 6-cylinder engine. It has sequential multi-point electronic fuel injection. It puts out 173 horsepower and 220 foot-pounds of torque. 
but most important, if you put this new engine in a Jeep Cherokee or a Jeep Comanche, you're going to see more speed and power than you've ever seen from vehicles like this. Just remember where you saw it first. The Cincinnati Bengals, guided by the hot hand of Boomer Esiason. The Cleveland Browns, Bernie Kozar hopes he can match the firepower. An ABC Thursday night NFL special. Al Michaels and Frank Gifford in Pittsburgh as Anderson kicks off in a beauty. Uh -huh. Who pumped up? So after his 42-yard field goal, the Denver Broncos take over at their own 20-yard line, first and 10. And here comes Elway. You know, Frank, we talked about, obviously, what a great athlete he is, and I think most people know Elway was drafted by the New York Yankees and spent one season playing minor league baseball, of course, opting for football. But there's an interesting little thing. Elway and Dan Marino, of course, coming out of the same football draft in 1983, but they were in another draft as well. And first down from the 20-yard line. Elway sets up the screen, and it's Mark Jackson, the rookie, who takes it out past the 30, and a nice move as he gets it out to the 37-yard line. So Mark Jackson had a Purdue stopped by Mike Merriweather. Good speed, Mark Jackson. He just does not have the experience, and when Vance Johnson went down a week ago they felt they better come back with Clint Sampson who had worked on the flanker side and they moved him over but they want to take a long look at this youngster a rookie six round draft pick with a good speed and obviously some pretty heady running thinks when he runs and he gets the first down out of the 37 first and 10 Broncos from the 37 yard line as they had Watson in the backfield send him in motion and a quick toss for a couple. Anyway, Frank, in the 1979 baseball draft, baseball this is now, Jay Schrader, who's now the Washington quarterback, was picked in the first round by the Toronto Blue Jays. And there it is, Dan Marino. People forget about this. The Royals picked him in round four. John Elway was picked in the 18th round, opted not to sign. And look at the bottom of the graphic. All those guys were picked ahead of Don Mattingly. <laughs> Comes around, goes around. Wide open, Watson. Second down, and it's complete to the 45, and a first down is Harvey Clayton is covering on the play. Clayton, who was severely beaten by Watson earlier on a 21-yard touchdown catch, is, well, he's just giving up too much ground. Clayton's a better football player than he's giving himself credit for. He was off Watson by about 8 or 10 yards. You don't even see him in the shot. Watson does not have that kind of speed. You don't have to worry about Watson going that deep he'll go deep but I mean you can run with him he was so far off him he just terrified of Watson after getting turned around on that zig out that Watson put on him for the touchdown the only touchdown of the game he knows it also meanwhile David Little linebacker shaken up on the play he's interchangeable with Dennis Winston is in there right now first and ten Denver at the Pittsburgh 43 Sewell in motion double reverse Sewell 43-yard line. Winston followed that all the way from his inside linebacking position. But these are good plays to run, particularly when you have a lead. It keeps the defense honest. It keeps the pursuit down. You bring it back, and gadget plays are cute and fun, but they mean they are also meaningful. You take everything to the right, and you don't do something to bring it back. You're going to have that constant pursuit, and it's hard to turn the corner. You do that once or twice. And the pursuit is going to think. The defense is going to hesitate just a moment. And that's what happened there. Second and ten. Contact made. I think I said double reverse. It was a single reverse, of course. Mattingly's Coach name appeared, and I thought about Number doubles. 98 defense. Still second down. Gerald Williams with the encroachment. Clock stopped right now. It's been a fast quarter. 153 to play in the third. Broncos on top, 7-3. to three. Good to know they can play a fast quarter. <laughs> yeah, that's All right. you need to do is keep a drive alive, <laughs> and we'll get out of here by midnight. We were sure beginning to wonder, weren't we? These things are turning into brunch. Will <laughs> Hyde in motion, and Winder through the middle. 
charging ahead close to a first. He takes it to the 33 yard line. Sammy Winder trying to get the, the tough yardage. He was very instrumental on their drive that culminated in the only touchdown of the game, the pass to Watson in the second quarter. Winder, going back to last season and coming into tonight's game, had averaged only 2.8 yards per rush in his last eight games. So the Broncos trying to get things in gear on the ground. If he's their prime man. Third in the yard. Uh-oh. Fake to Winder. Oh, and look, and he's got Sewell wide, wide open for a touchdown. Oh, talk about beautiful ball handling. That, that play almost looked like it was in slow motion as you watched it with a naked eye. Great call coming down from the box to Dan Reeves. Mike Shanahan, we assume, called for the fake play action. Well hidden by Elway, just like he did a week ago when he went in for that touchdown pass. He handed off to Sewell and sort of slumped out to the sidelines before he put on the strip. But look how open he is and what a nightmare of a night it is for Harvey Clayton. Watson has been spinning him like a top. And this time he was looking at Elway, read Elway's fake, and Sewell went right by him. It's going to be a tough day at the movies for the videotape for Harvey Clayton tomorrow. Carlos with the extra point. It was great watching that play. It's as if all of the action just froze outside of Elway and Sewell. And, of course, Clayton in futile pursuit. Broncos now lead 14 to 3. On the ground, one a 12-yard run, the other a 2-yard run. He catches one tonight, and Carlos kicks off with Denver ahead 14 to 3, and it's a short kick, and it's fielded up at the 14-yard line by Warren Seitz, a tight end by trade, and sometime running back, as was the case briefly in Seattle last week, after the 27. Now, Don Elway is off to a tremendous start. Last week, he was 21 of 35, 240 yards, 239 yards against the Raiders. No interceptions, a couple of touchdowns. He's already 19 to 34 tonight, 227 yards and a couple of touchdowns. Uh, hard to say just how good this youngster can be. We'll see you one more time on a Monday. We have Denver at the Jets in October. Malone on first down from the 27-yard line, shoots one out, nowhere. Lift was uh, sort of in the neighborhood, sort of. Booing. He was open, but what Malone saw was double coverage out there, and he had double coverage. He had right underneath, and he had Dennis Smith deep. Malone saw it. I guess maybe at this point, the way things have gone last week and thus far tonight, he's a little bit gun shy. He could have got it in there, but he would have had to taken a would have taken a very competent quarterback, and I don't think that's what he is right now. He's he's a shaken quarterback. Second and ten from the 27-yard line. little gain out to the 32 yard line but he still comes up about five yards shy in a way though Frank you know you could really see this coming when we saw the Steelers in preseason even though on the night we caught them they scored a lot of points against Dallas but you knew they were very concerned about the offense they had the talent outside but the other parts the other component parts were worrying them and they had the injuries they they now have the injured players back particularly Abercrombie and Pollard they're playing better they have Borey's back, Rimster, their rookie, is playing, but they have not played long enough together to be effective. Suddenly, at the beginning of this season, the banner says, what about Campbell? Scott Campbell, they're talking about, a six-foot quarterback out of Purdue that ranks only behind Mark Herman up there. He started a couple of games last year did Scott Campbell who a lot of people would like to see come into this game now relieving Mark Malone he started the Redskins and Giants game and he lost both of those games I think Chuck again is worried about the fragility of uh, the ego and the emotions of Mark Malone he wants to go with him as long as he can on third and five it is complete to the 40 yard line to Ouija Thompson and that's only the second time in 11 attempts that the Steelers tonight have converted on third down so they keep the drive going on the initial play of the fourth quarter. And behind Mark Scott Campbell would be 
Bubby Brister, a rookie out of Northeast Louisiana. We saw him down in Dallas. Al appeared while he has talent, he's got a lot to learn. And he has his backers. From the 41-yard line. Malone, throwing for Licks, who has fallen down, gets back up, makes the catch, gets to the 41. He had slipped to his knees at Lips, and he got back up and still makes the catch. That'll tell you how open he was. The flag is down. And we're going to have a holding call, but it's worth looking at again as Louis Lips works Louis right to the inside, slips wide open. Louis again respecting that speed. And a holding call is going to bring it all back. When the wheels come off, they all come off. Back to the 31 yard line, so the 10 yard penalty. First and 20. I think going to the tight end. Mm. Guitard, Wilson loses Stallworth as he breaks back inside of him. Guitard even, I think, got a finger on that ball. So, very fortunate reception for the Steelers. Second down and four from the 47. For Stallworth, and he's all over. Yeah, you will get the flag on that. Steve Wilson, little doubt about Wilson almost piggybacking him. One way to cover him. Having a tough time otherwise. Made Wilson look to the outside, broke it to the inside. Defense he knew he was beaten. Pass interference. Automatic first down. Wilson had a handful of him. And he knew he was beaten. He was beaten actually to the outside. He was beaten back to the inside. So he just grabbed on, took the ride. Well, that's not a play subject to review by the replay official, but that is what you call indisputable visual evidence. Well, what an all to see. Denver ahead, 14 to 3. Steelers at the Bronco, 43. 13 12 to go in the fourth. And incomplete over the middle, looking for Gothard the tight end. Just a reminder, Al, tomorrow on Good Morning America. Special program coming up. David Hartman talks with President Corazon Aquino about the future of the Philippines and its importance to our country. So watch David tomorrow. He'll report from the Philippines on Good Morning America. Pittsburgh, second down and 10 at the Denver 43 yard line. 13 08 to play in the fourth. Broncos trying to go 2 0. Steelers, of course, coming in 0-1. Malone steps up, throws, complete at the 30-yard line. He's got Stallworth there for a first down. First and 10 at the 30. Steve Wilson again. And this time Steve is slow getting up. But again, when you're covering a legend, it is difficult. And Steve Wilson has had his problems tonight. Just as Harvey Clayton has had his troubles for Pittsburgh. So an injury timeout. It comes with 12.50 to go in the fourth in Pittsburgh, where the Broncos lead 14 to 3. Trail 14 3, first and 10 from the 30. Malone takes to use, lost it for Lips, who gets tied up and no flag. And it looked for a moment as if one of the officials began to reach for it and then thought otherwise. Louis Wright is there with Louis Lips. Louis Wright did a good job on Louis Lips. Got in that five-yard area, hammered him around. He released that after he had been with him for five yards. Malone, under pressure, had to throw the football. And Louis Wright's been around a while. And 
Smith's got a little bit of a lesson there. That could have been a sixer had he been able to get to the outside and got into the sprint. Second and ten, Pittsburgh at the Denver 30. He's looking toward Lips. He has him again. Nice catch made at the 21-yard line. Just short of the first down, it'll be third and one. That's a good call. They come right back to Lips. Right playing him to keep him from getting outside, so take what you can get inside, and they are using right almost exclusively in single coverage on his side, trying to protect over on the other side. Now, Lips and Stallworth both come out, and that tells you double tight end formation. Though so they do keep Thompson in the game and flank him to the left on third down. Third and one. Play goes down on a busted play and a fumble and a loose ball, and it looks like the Broncos have it. But let's see about the penalty. Louis Wright has the football, but the official has the decision here. The recovery is made, however. Offside against Denver. Let's take a look at it again. As they're Off moving at the lower right. Defensive left end. He means Jim Ryan 50. And they keep the drive alive. Ryan playing the short yardage. Beats the count, and the Steelers keep it alive. It's their deepest penetration of the night as they drove to the 25 the last time they had the football. Anderson kicked the 42-yarder. Now they're at the 16. 11.28 to play in the fourth. That's lifts at the 9-yard line. Right making the stop. So Lips and Stallworth so instrumental here in the second half after being so relatively silent in the first half and they've basically forgotten about Abercrombie and Pollard and they've been going with Ehrenberg and Hughes for better blocking and occasionally going to the tight end and at least they've been able to move the football with some authority in the second half. Louis Wright is covering Louis Lips individually and that is a tough role he's done a good job he's been close malone has had some good shots into him that's stalworth up at the top of your screen he has the wide side of the field Hughes on second and two he gets to the seven it'll be third and one he is stopped in the middle by greg cragen <laughs> here's where that bronco defense is tough we watch them year in and year out as we look at chuck no We'd love to see that first touchdown of the season go up on the board, but they seem to always come up with the fumble. They get the turnover. They do something down here that is, is wildly unusual. I think what we're looking at is a double play situation. If they don't make it on this down, if they run the ball, and they're not going to, they would come back and go on fourth down. Ehrenberg can't handle it at the five-yard line, and they have to go for it with 10 minutes to go in the fourth quarter. They're down by 11 which means you're down by two touchdowns. That one also should have been caught. Difficult catch, but it was a catch that could have been made, and it could have been a first down. When I say you're down by 11 and down by two, that's in essence what you're down by with 10 minutes to go. You need two touchdowns. A touchdown and a field goal, uh-uh. You got to get into the end zone twice. So it's fourth and one, and they're compelled to go for it. And they give it to Ehrenberg, to the outside, he has it, and he has a touchdown! That's just a good read by Ehrenberg. Louis Wright's out inside, Ehrenberg, instead of taking it off tackle, read it, broke it to the outside, and gets the Steelers on the scoreboard. That caught inside, the contained man was Louis Wright. And Ehrenberg read it well, got to the outside, and gets the touchdown. So it's 14-9 going on 10 with Anderson, who has kicked 121 straight. He hasn't missed an extra point in three years. Whoa, he came close. That was a bad snap. 
But Campbell was able to get it down. Nice move by Scott. 14-10. Denver leading it with 9.54 remaining in the fourth. The Steelers finally score a touchdown. Good receiver out of the backfield. He used to run back kicks. Good running back. You saw that a moment ago. And has given the Steelers team new life. And worth noting again, we've mentioned it. Now for the TD, he's playing with a separated shoulder as Aaron Berg. He's up. Taken two yards deep in the end zone by Ken Bell, the rookie. And he's hit hard as he brings it out to the 21-yard line. And the crowd is really pumped up now. Greg Carr makes the tackle. So 14 to 10, and here come the Broncos with 9.45 remaining in the fourth. And you've got a fired up defense. This defense has played well all night. The criticism, of course, had to go to the offense that really came out and played a much better brand of football here in the second half with Malone firing strikes to his outside receivers, getting good running from Aaron Berg, getting Aaron Berg on the passing situation, a totally different team offensively here in the second half. But the defense has been steady throughout the game, and they have kept the Steelers in it. 9.45 remaining, they have a shot at it. First and 10, Denver from the 21. Upstairs goes Elway. A little flip out here to Gerald. Will Hyde, he's going to throw the football. No. Watson's wide open. And the Broncos have done it again. No, that was a pass back there. But they're going to rule it a forward pass. A forward pass and no throw allowed by Will Hyde. That's the ruling. And oh. Elway is saying, what are you talking about? And now the crowd senses it. You think the video will come into operation very shortly? You know, you wondered about the, the play in the 49er Ram game yesterday. Everybody's talking about the pass at the end. What about the shovel on the return? Pass on the 47. Two forward passes. All right, you judge here. I thought it was instantly by the naked eye. Mm. Yeah, and now I don't. Oh, I'm not That's so sure about that. But is he across the line of scrimmage? No. Is it a four? It looked like it was a, a lateral. Let's take, take another him. look here. All right, the line of scrimmage is the 21. That's one thing you have to keep in mind, too. Elway goes back to the 13 and a half. He throws to the 12. at the 15, even though he came forward, he's behind the line of scrimmage. I'm sure they are ruling it that it was a double pass. And it would be very close. Apparently, we're not even going to look at it on video. It is second down and 10 from the 21-yard line. Elway throwing, and that's Will Height, and he's out of bounds at the 27. We're going to we'll check with the replay booth for you, because as we go along here, there are plays that are and are not under the jurisdiction, as Elway definitely throws a lateral. There's no way that's a forward pass, and Will Height is behind the line of scrimmage here at the 15. Well, try and get it cleared up yep. for you, whether or not they said he was beyond the line of scrimmage, which he was not, or whether the pass was a double pass, and it appeared to be, but again, we're looking at it yeah. from an angle. It could have been very obvious to the official that it was a double pass. I think what's happening here is that the umpire and the referee are together. They couldn't stop the play before that last play. I can tell you exactly what I think is happening. All of a sudden, he got buzzed. There's a, a beeper, and he was told, and sure enough, there's the walkie-talkie, but they got the play off before they were able to stop it. Here's what they saw. They are seeing it with the same angle, and they're going to rule it two forward passes. And we are again, this is why video replays are always going to be questionable. This is an angle that the officials are looking at, just as you looked at. Well, the our understanding, the ruling was two forward passes. Well, he, here is the oddity right here. Here's where this is different than any other. You're supposed to come up with a ruling before the next play. And obviously, they are talking about this right now, but there has been a play run in the meantime, meanwhile, here's Elway. There's no doubt this is not a forward pass. That's a, a lateral. And what do they do about pass. the timing? They've run another play already. Now he's well behind. He's five yards behind the line of scrimmage. Remember the deep drop by Elway. There's Watson for the touchdown. They've already run an intervening play. Of all the things we thought could happen, well, I suppose everybody did fear that something like this, or if you were in the league office, you feared that something like this might take place. And it just took place. 
And they are going to rule it is third down. So yeah. what appeared to be obvious to us, a lateral. And again, we're looking at it at an angle. And it was called a double pass. Uh, he most certainly was not over the line of scrimmage. That was obvious. Well, we'll so get, play continues. We'll get it clarified for you. Third down and four. Will Height dropping the snap. And it looked like Will Height was about to cut in front of Elway. I don't know whether it was planned that he would take the snap and run with it or just drop, but they're lucky that he recovered. That has got to be very disturbing, and it'll be even more so when Danny Reeves looks at the replay. Again, this is the major concern of the video replay. They do not have, they saw exactly what you saw, and we were looking at it from an angle. It did, however, appear to be a lateral. Well, they, 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 probably, they probably agree that it was a legal play. The problem is that they had run the intervening play. They'd run the play after that. Jack wheels the kick from the 10-yard line. From the 39, it's Rick Woods on a fair pass right there. One thing that is glaringly obvious that the video replay is not the ultimate solution. <laughs> not hardly, as the saying goes. Not yet, anyway. 14-10 Denver. Denver ahead, 14-10 Pittsburgh at its own 39-yard line and what's become a very controversial game and will be triply so if Pittsburgh wins. Little screen set up for David Hughes who gets a nice block and gets bumped out of bounds after he crosses the 50 in a first down. Now we checked with the replay booth. Paul Krapinski is the replay official. He agreed it was a legal play, and the problem was, as you'll see right here, it's a legal play in every aspect. It's a backward pass, and then Will Height does not go past the line of scrimmage, and the problem was they weren't sure in the replay booth what was the call on the field. And in the meantime, they let the Broncos run another play off, and by that time, it was too late to overrule it. And Denver loses a 79-yard touchdown. They sure did. First and 10 from the 49-yard line. Malone back and throwing over the middle and flag goes down. And it's incomplete. The pass intended for Stallworth. Covered by Hundley on the play. And it's against Denver. Holding. 8.20 to play in the fourth. Here's a call from Holding. McElwee. Number 52 defense. You know, it's funny, we started to talk about it, Frank, yesterday in the Rams 49ers game. There was a play at the end of the game involving whether or not the defensive back had made contact with Bobby Duckworth. The Rams wind up taking the field goal anyway, but I thought more importantly in that game, and there is Reeves, and you know he's angry because he knows what's going on. He's really angry, right? He's angry about that call. He's angry about a lot of things. But on the, on the return yesterday by the Rams, there, was, there should have been a question about whether that was a forward pass or not. From the 44-yard line, it's left to the 35-yard line. He's stopped there by Steve Wilson. Lou, Lou, Lou goes to fan again. They have moved Wilson over to the left side, the Denver Broncos have. They have Mike Harden working over on the right side. And you can't hide out there, however. The Steelers find him, meaning Steve Wilson, and they come right back and work on him once again. Second down and one. Lips has now caught six for 68 yards. So it's under his average. They're sending him on shorter routes tonight, and they're making them pay off here in the second half. The cornerbacks are Wilson and Harden. And he's going in Harden's direction, and incomplete is Harden. And Stallworth were hung up on the play, and Malone can't believe he didn't get the call. As he goes right up to the side judge, Royal Capcourt. And Malone might have had an argument. They have moved Harden over to the right side, replacing Wilson. But they come back against Harden. Single coverage. Stallworth is right there. And contact made. And they are allowing so much more today on the part of the cornerbacks. There's no question a couple of years ago that would have drawn an instant flag, any kind of contact. But you can, you can move them around out there a little more. Third down and one. Three tight end setups. Thompson goes in motion as he serves as the eighth back and Hughes scrambles 
Jackson with that second effort. First forward loses the football, and Denver gets it back. That's Denver defense. They do it over and over and over. They strip the ball better than any team probably in football today. And that silences this strong with 7.24 to go in the fourth. Hughes picked up from Seattle again because of the problems Abercrombie and Pollard have had physically. They look for reserve help and falling on the football, recovering it is Mike Harden, number 31. Well, if he breaks that to the outside, he not only gets the first down, he probably gets good yardage. He put the head down, closed the eyes, and ran right into the stack. Could have been an easy first down to the outside. Broncos at their own 35-yard line. They lead 14 to 10. I'd love to run some time off that clock. And they start with Will Hyde, who normally is in there to catch passes, and they send him up the middle to the 39-yard line. Either catch or throw passes. <laughs> Gain of four, second down and six. Well, that was one of the problems that... That's going to be all year long. The, you get the feeling, don't you? The league had thought about, and that is what happens if, if that intervening play gets run. And once that, that next play is run, before you have a chance to determine whether or not you want to overrule a call, it's too late, folks. Second down and six in the 39-yard line. And Steve Sewell moves ahead for a couple. Kenny Wolf, our producer, makes a good point. What about if the coach is in question to call a timeout to allow the replay booth more time? Or they have the capabilities of buzzing the official on the field, and then they have the capability of talking with him. But the buzz came too late. And you can't take the seconds off the clock. You can't take away the seven-yard pickup that was made by Will Height. It has some buzz in it, to say the least. Yes. And again, those angles are very deceptive. But not on that play. Third down and one. Sammy Winder is stopped back of the line of scrimmage, and a flag goes down. Edmund Nelson, number 64, is there. Penalty marker is down. Going to be against the Steelers. Ooh, and that's a first down. So instead of having to punt, they keep the football with 6 one to play in the fourth. Side, left tackle. First down. Steelers have been plagued with that all night long, and this really comes at a tough time. They would have gotten the football back in fairly good field position. He said left tackle. I, I think that was Keith Gary, 92. First and 10. From the 49-yard line, Sewell is the man in motion, and Lang, or Winder, rather. Winder gets across the 50 to the 49-yard line for a gain of about two. Each team, as we head down toward the final minutes, with all of their timeouts remaining and a little shoving going on with Will Height. So Pittsburgh tonight and then across the border to Ohio where the Bengals meet the Browns in Cleveland on Thursday. Be with us at 8 Eastern time. And a week from tonight, Green Bay and Chicago, our first look this year at Chicago. On second and eight, Elway gets it off, throws to one of his linemen, and the flag goes down. He Billy turned Brian right in the head. It was Keith Bishop, the man that uh, <laughs> was in the area, but uh, unfortunately for the Broncos, he ain't eligible. Illegal pass. Hit number 54 on the offense behind the line. Loss of down. Got to liberalize this game. Let these guys who do all the work catch the ball once in a while. Takes a discipline to put those hands down. Mm. Elway under a lot of pressure at that time. Reeves with a backup quarterback, Kubiak. And Elway was able to... Um, Sees the moment to confer orally with him as the penalty was marched off. And it will be third down eight. What's uh, going out to the right? There is no penalty without it, just the loss of down, which is a penalty in itself. 
Elway for Samson is in front and Samson cannot make the catch. Samson had beaten his man. Tripped on the seam at first base, I think, Al. He had taken Harvey Clayton and it's very possible they have the seams over the infield cutouts right here and we'll take a look. Clayton will not sleep much tonight. Tried to get back inside again. Strong arm effort by Elway just to flip that ball about 50 yards and still didn't get it deep enough. Sampson had Clayton. So Pittsburgh will get it back as they hold near midfield. Rick Woods is back there to receive. And Jack Wheel to kick. 4.53 left in the fourth. Broncos on top 14 to 10 and should be on top 21 to 10. Almost appeared as if the officials were consulting a video replay for something on that play. They huddled together and held up play for several seconds and then let it go. So wheel to kick. He's back at his own 35. bouncing back in and they'll mark it at the 17 4.45 to go Steelers trail by four set of the National Football League is strictly prohibited so here are the Steelers now at their own 17 yard line first and 10 they trail by four 4.45 to go in the fourth they have all of their timeouts remaining as they commence this drive below goes behind Ehrenberg who was covered and it's second down and 10. They'd like to have that back. They had no check off at all out of it. They had the two wide outs, Stallworth and Lips were both deep. They were both covered. He had no place to put it. Ehrenberg had not even turned around to look back at Malone. Second and 10. Ball just outside the 17. Goes on top 14 10. Stallworth left, lift right. They have to go to Stallworth and lift. They have been working those outside cornerbacks all night long. He's looking for Stallworth and throws an interception at the 35 yard line. Tony Lilly was there. Denver, Tony Lilly. Denver finally got into double coverage on both outside men. Lilly was inside of Harden. Over on the other side, they were also double covering. And Malone did go to try to get it to Stallworth, and Lilly picked it off. He had Harden on his outside. He had Lilly on the inside. And poorly thrown football and picked off by Tony Lilly. Tony Lilly, tank top at all. Getting better every game, too. He is really putting the pressure on Steve Foley, the 11 year veteran at that free safety position. First down, Denver at the 31 yard line. Will Height in motion, and Winder takes it through the middle. Remember, last year, Denver won 11 games and didn't make the playoffs, and the Cleveland Browns, who won eight, were in there because of the, the playoff process. And I was just thinking, if Denver were to lose this game, could you imagine in a situation as we had tonight, if the Steelers were to come from behind, it would be the toughest loss of all to think that you had a situation where, because of the implementation of the replay, they were denied a touchdown. And it's interesting, so much made about indisputable visual evidence, what is, what isn't. There are a lot of bugs in what amounts to the implementation of the process as well. Tonight is what would have happened without the replay. Except we were just aware through the replay that it should have been used. Winder picks up a couple and takes the ball to the 23-yard line as the Broncos try to chew up the clock, which is now down to 328 and ticking. It's funny that Broncos, it's ironic, the Broncos were one of four teams to vote against the replay.
replay system this year. Just for the record, the Giants, the Cardinals, the Bronx, and the Chiefs voted against it, and the Steelers abstained. Fair point. Hmm. To the 20 goes Winder, and he should have the first down. So Sammy with a tough yardage here. And we'll see where they mark it. It's going to be very close. They need to get to the 21. Enough. First down. You know, Al, you talked about looking back at the end of the year. The schedule for both these teams is really a tough one. For Sunday on a short week, the Denver Broncos go home, then they come back and play in Philadelphia. Philadelphia, And they also have a tough test of teams out of their division. They play the Giants, they play Dallas, they play Washington, and they also play the Jets. So it's not an easy road to a, another 11-5 season and a really mm -hmm. tough one to what they did in 84 when they were 13-3. One thing in their favor, though, last year they were basically kept out of it by the two OT losses to the Raiders, and they've already taken care of the Raiders. And Washington helped out by uh, beating the Raiders. Of course, there still is Seattle. Seattle's going to be tough, and of course, San Diego. Down to two seconds and one second before Elway gets the snap off to Winder. Elway with great presence of mind right there. Let the clock run all the way down to one second. Had the ball snapped, gave it to Winder, and now unless the Steelers want to stop it, and they do, they'll take their timeout right here, their first of three. So they'll take the timeout here, get the next break at the two-minute warning, and we've got 2.17 left on the clock. Tonight on Nightline, the new drug law proposals. Is the concern over drugs causing us to go too far? That is the subject tonight on Nightline, following your late local news. I mentioned the Denver schedule out of their division now. The Steelers don't have it much easier. They need teams like the Bears. They also play New England. They have the Jets on their schedule as well as their Central Division. This Sunday, Steelers will be at Minnesota, while Denver's, I mentioned, will be at Philadelphia. Danny Reeves done a great job bringing along John Elway. UCLA or USC against so Baylor. Wait a minute. <laughs> Sorry, Trojan One's fans. private and one's public. <laughs> yeah. And Clemson, Georgia are our two presentations for you Saturday at 3 Eastern time. I mentioned Danny Reeves and the way he has brought along John Elway. I guess it's not too big a task because everyone knew exactly what he was in Baltimore. Drafted him number one back in 1983. And Denver acquired him for some other expensive draft picks. What did they give? First, a couple of firsts, I guess, for him to bring him to Denver. But they knew they had a talent. It was just kind of in a raw form as any quarterback coming into this league as a rookie, they're going to be raw. They just do not learn the same things at the collegiate level. Isn't that always the, the, the situation? You're a Superman, and then you become the savior of a franchise, and the fans get impatient. And uh, Elway, I believe, made his professional hey, did. regular season debut in Oak the Lake. ballpark. Yeah, had a terrible day. They've got it figured out. They're just going to cover up the football. The Steelers have two timeouts remaining. And the two-minute warning will also stop the clock. Second down, call it six at the 17-yard line. Elway saying, go in motion. Somebody missed the call. You can see him stamping like a horse. Will High takes it to the 13-yard line, and somebody wasn't on the same page in the Bronco huddle. I think it was Sewell, the wing back. Elway wanted him to come in motion, and now Elway's giving him a little bit of a lecture there. He saw his foot moving, and that tells the man, get in motion, which he never did. He said, come on, let's go. <laughs> you couldn't only miss it, could you? That's almost a legal procedure. We've got the two-minute warning. Reeves and the Broncos holding on 14-10. Denver on top, 14 to 10. Two minutes to go. It is third down and a long yard at the 13 for Denver. Elway sends Sewell in motion. He got his grip that time. And then Elway to Winder out in front, and Winder goes in for the score. So the Steelers compressing the middle, and the Broncos go to the outside on a third and one. Two short yardage plays that look for sure to be running plays and a pair of touchdowns for the Broncos. 22, 22, Good play calling on the sidelines. Dan Reeves sending it in. Of course, I think Mike Shanahan, the offensive coordinator, having a lot to do with it. Good play action right here. Stuck it in, gave it a good hand, and wide open. Elway didn't fool around with it. He got it out there quickly, and Donnie Shell just overran it. Elway, three touchdowns.
touchdown passes tonight. What a start for the season after last week, 21 of 35, 239 yards and a couple of touchdowns with no interceptions against the Raiders. Big start. And a touchdown catch as well as Carlos's kick is good. Sammy Winder, he made it look like a running play as he says hello to everyone back in Mississippi. He looks like he plays in the National Hockey League. Put the hand in there and Elway read it right away. It's a good thing he did because he was, he had a defensive end right in his face that was totally unattended. Realign your shock absorbers if you don't get rid of it. Two short yardage plays. Steelers thinking run all the way and Denver gets a pair of touchdowns. They're going to be strong, the Broncos. You know what? They're fun to watch, too. It's an interesting they? team. Yep. They, they, run enough, wife, my mom. they run enough gadgets. Come on. Hi, Mom. Hi, Janet. Hi, Jesse. And, Woo! Our, and all the above. What about Dad? <laughs> Dad in the Sanford Cardinal beating Texas the other day. Happiness is being a winning quarterback. 2-0, throwing no interceptions in the world in front of you. Mm -hmm. And Elway's contract doesn't hurt either. He's always been that way. If I remember they signed him. They had the interview and he gave it the, the Valley Boy treatment. Yeah, sure. Good young man. And can he play this game? Carlos kicks off. And through the end zone. So the Steelers will take over at the 20-yard line. And the Broncos will have a nice flight home, and then they'll come right back to the good old Commonwealth and go cross state to Philadelphia for the Eagles next Sunday. 31 yards and six plays. And for the Steelers, a regrouping and a trip to Minneapolis next Sunday for the Vikings. Yeah, I go get a ball. Off to a very tough start, the Steelers. Stadium almost empty. Sell out crowd with a lot of memories of Joe Green, Terry Bradshaw, Franco Harris. Screen to use, and he takes it out to the 30 yard line. Funny how things run in cycles for cities, too. I'm thinking about Pittsburgh right now, and the, the Pirates have had a, a bad year, and the Steelers uh, are off to a, a bad start. And then there are other locales as Malone throws and Ehrenberg makes the catch out of the 40. But you think about New England, Frank, and the fact that uh, in just in one season of sorts, the Patriots go to the Super Bowl, the Red Sox are on their way to the Eastern Division title, the Celtics, of course. And uh, a few years back, L.A. with the Rams going to the Super Bowl and then the Dodgers winding up in the World Series and the Lakers having a great year. And, Philadelphia in the 70s at one point with the 76ers and the Flyers and the Eagles going to the Super Bowl and the Phillies winning a world title. And then all of a sudden you've got that and then you've got what you got in Pittsburgh right now. It can change so quickly, one or two key players and of course the 28 teams you no longer can. If you finish on top, you have a tough time drafting. You're the champion, you're going to get the 28th player picked in the draft. The next time around, you're going to get the 56th. And it compounds itself and that's what the Steelers were faced with a few years ago. Well, this city has certainly seen its good times along the, the line that I just spoke of when the Pirates won the World Championship in 79 and the Steelers were in the process of winning four Super Bowls and the Pitt Panthers and the Tony Dorsett in the mid-70s. Steelers will win some football games. They're solid. They're very solid defensively. You have to question the quarterbacking. There's no way you cannot question it. Mark Malone, he's had fairly good protection. He has great outside receivers. And they're just not getting the production. Going deep and incomplete. Intended for Ehrenberg. Smith covering on the play. ABC's NFL Monday Night Football being produced by Ken Wolf and our director, Chet Forty, technical director, Joe Schavo, Associate Director Newbar Stone, Rick Okulski, our technical manager, Bob Simon, our unit manager, Frank Dolger, our telecommunications manager, Chaz Weissman, Bruce Clark, assistance to the producer, information and statistics from the impeccable one, Steve Hurt, mm, and our thanks, yep, our thanks up here, as always, to Malibu Kelly Hayes, 
for the spotting into George Hill, our statistician. Got a quick look at Chuck Nolan. You have to wonder what is going through his mind. Two down, 14 to go. Batted away, it'll be fourth down. Houston coming on in his own division. Cleveland very much improved, as is Cincinnati. And I mentioned earlier on their schedule out of the division, they play teams like the Bears and New England, the two Super Bowl teams. Could be one of your basic long years. Mm. Watson, who got things started by catching the touchdown pass in the first half. Watson trails only one receiver since 1981 in total yardage. This is a slow free agent out of Temple. That one receiver, a great one, I might add. On fourth and one, it goes to Stallworth, and he just does get the first down to keep it going. That receiver, James Lofton of the Green Bay Packers, we'll see him a week from tonight. Against the Chicago Bears. Clock running down, 48 seconds on first down. Penalty marker. Intended for Sweeney and picked off at the 40-yard line by Steve Foley. And he's gone out of bounds. And we've got a marker down at the 33. Illegal use of the hands. Hands to the face, 65 offense. Penalty will be declined, first down. And you don't even have to check with the captains for the options on that baby. And that will write a finish to this one. Ray Penny was the man, 65. There's Sweeney, the intended receiver. Once again, Thursday night, we'll be in Cleveland, the Cleveland Browns with Bernie Kozar against the Cincinnati Bengals. Boomer Esiason. The happy Foley. When you're winning, it's fun. The other That's side of the field is not so happy. Goose Gonsolin, the old defensive back, has just had his record tied. 43 career interceptions. And a man on the field has more tonight. Donnie Schell with 27. Mecklenburg, the snow goose. Happy on one side and all the emotions being played out on the losing side. Mark so Malone with two games back to back that you could not be terribly proud of and happiness as I said as a winning quarterback on a 2-0 and football team with everything in your career ahead of you Broncos on top AFC West along with Seattle Steelers drop to 0 and 2 Al Michaels Frank Gifford saying goodnight from Pittsburgh where Denver has beaten the Steelers by a score of 21 to 10 and this ABC Sports exclusive has been brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealer for comfort innovation and a real commitment to quality it's today's Buick by Miller Lite for great taste there's only one light beer by IBM and the growing family of IBM personal computers and by Wheaties the breakfast of champions energy for 100% whole wheat Wheaties what the big boys eat Travel arrangements made through and promotional fee paid by United Airlines. United flies more people to Hawaii than any other airline. Nobody knows Hawaii like United. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports, recognized around the world as the leader in sports television. That all. At the 27, and the ball deflected incomplete. Barris again. What a fine young athlete he is. He's 10 pounds heavier than last year. As a rookie, he had 10.